comparative forensics. We hope you all are um, and have thoroughly enjoyed yesterday's sessions and are eagerly looking forward to the sessions of today. We will be beginning today's event with a guest lecture on the topic value addition to autopsy practice by meaningful collab collaboration with ancillary divisions by Dr. S. Venkata Raghava, Professor and Head of Forensic Medicine, Bangalore Medical College and Research in Institute, Bangalore. To chair this session, I call upon Dr. Priyadarshini Pradhan, Professor and Head of Forensic Medicine, Sri Ramachandra Medical College and Research Institute, Chennai, and Dr. Ranju Ravindran, Professor of uh, Forensic Medicine, Government Medical College, Kolam. Very good morning. Uh, so first speaker of the day, let me take the opportunity to introduce him. Although he does not need an introduction, but he's a formality. So Dr. Venkat Raghava, Professor and Head from BMCRC. Apart from MBBS MD, he has also additional qualifications as PGDMLE from National Law School, Bangalore. Certificate course in Analytical Toxicology from Amrita. He is also in RGHS given many responsibilities such as member of Academic Council, both member of Board of Studies PG, member of Board of Studies UZ. Apart from that, he is also the PG Curriculum Committee of NMC. He was also a cluster head for the COVID hospital bed management in Bengaluru. And also he was one of the members to formulate the guidelines for medical legal autopsy protocol for COVID positive dead bodies. Among the achievements, if you, there are many, to name a few, he has got multiple guest lectures in CMEs conferences, including International Committee of the Red Cross and International Center for Humanitarian Forensics and other fora. He has been president of Simla 2021, Secretary Commerce 2017, Organizing Secretary Simla 2013, 25th Commerce, Cliff Talk CME, and On Current, and etc. And many are there. He has been associate editor of Journal, Journal of South India Medical Legal Association. Executive Committee member for Noble Action Consortium in Progress of Forensic Medicine and Toxicology. He is also awarded with the Indian Medical by Indian Medical Association as VC Roy Award for Bangalore Branch 2021, COVID Warrior Award in 2020 for the National Tuberculosis Institute Bangalore, and also Bruhat Bangalore Mahanagar Palike Award for COVID Management 2021. Along with he also has multiple many international and international publications in his name. I welcome you, sir. Please. The stage is yours. Elargo Namaskara Paramapuja Shuratri Shura Deshikenda Swamiji Gavandisuta in a Nandu. Uh, presentation so good morning everyone so greeting from uh, bangalore medical Call department of forensic medicine bangalore medical college and research institute bangalore so the my topic for the day is value addition to autopsy practice by meaningful collaboration with ancillary divisions so first i want to pay my sincere respect and homage to the souls of the victims who have prone to be source of my information and knowledge so the agenda for my presentation will be introduction, histopathology, microbiology, biochemistry, radiology, odontology, FSL, and summary. This will be my agenda for the day. So when uh, Dr. Arun uh, told me this topic, so first uh, I wanted to search the exact meaning of what is the meaning of ancillary. So ancillary is nothing but is to provide support or to help. So some of branches of our medicine and other scientific faculties, they will help in our routine day-to-day -day PM activities. So this definitely helps us to determine and corroborate about the cause of death. So these branches supplement the anatomical findings identified. So for this, 
I had to go on all, review my all 20 years photographs so that I can get the best out of it and uh, show it to you. So that is the first thing uh, I did. I collected all my old photographs and uh, uh, everything I checked so that uh, it will be a good presentation. Hope it will be, you will enjoy this presentation. So the difficulties is usually when we perform autopsy, the difficulties we encounter in pediatric deaths, autopsies with minimal or no findings, delayed hanging, treated case of poisoning, electrocution with no jowl burn. So these are some of the cases. Many times we encounter uh, difficulties in many cases, but some of the prominent cases here I am showing, we will be thinking how to give the opinion or mainly the police will be, they won't be bothered about anything. They will tell us uh, cause of death and manner of death. Th only th those things, they are always bothered. They are not worried about other difficulties which we face. So histopathology to support establish cause or manner of death. So where all we perform histopathology, natural deaths, drug overdose, that is treated cases with no findings, RTS, example diffuse oxygenal injury, sudden unexplained deaths in children, electrocution, delayed hanging, etc. These places, histopathology is very useful. So helpful, especially when the findings are very much minimal. So there is one saying when the going gets stuff, I believe in pink. So cases. Here I am demonstrating, uh, showing you two cases where a 32 year old male, an engineer by profession, was playing cricket with his friends at a park. Mid game, he clutched his chest and collapsed. He was rushed to a nearby hospital where he was declared dead. So, surfaces of both lungs showed multiple petechial hemorrhages. They were deeply congested and edematous. Uh, heart weight 390 grams with multiple petechiae over the surface. So, LV wall was 1.8 centimeter, RV wall 0 0.7 centimeter. Interventricular was septum was 1.5 centimeter in thickness. So multiple sections of the right ventricular were replaced by fatty tissue. So left anterior descending artery lumen was narrowed by and occluded by 70 to 75 percent. It was noticed from one centimeter from its origin. Heart was sent for histopathology, expecting findings of myocardial infarction. Then the free wall of the right ventricle illustrates disappearance of the myocardium with transmural fibrofatty replacement, patchy myocarditis with myocyte death and round cell inflammatory infiltrates seen. So this was the histopathology finding. So death was due to arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy. So some textbooks use as ARVD, but usually when I found out the literature, arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy, very commonly seen in footballers. We had done two, three cases of footballer deaths also. Then uh, this is one more case where a 33 year old female was subjected to autopsy. On inquiring, we were informed by the police that she was in abusive marriage. Her husband would regularly come home drunk and physically abuse her. One morning the husband called her father and informed him of her death. Then uh, her father found her dead on the bed. So again the police registered case of 174 CCRPC. So post-mortem examination, we noticed some ant bite marks at places, abrasion 6 into 1 centimeter, 6 into 1 centimeter on left cheek and right angle of mouth, 13 into 4 centimeter or inner aspect of right arm, and 0.3 into 0.3 or semicircular abrasions or the nail marks for the left arm. There were some contusions, one contusion mainly 18 centimeter into 10 centimeter, left lateral aspect of abdomen. So all the organs were congested. So posterior surface of larynx and trachea showed extravasion of blood over an area 5 cm into 2 cm. Left kidney and spleen had a hemorrhagic patch. So to differentiate between and also to document between ant bites and abrasions and antimortem injury and Prince Lou Garden artifact, which occurs in the neck, we had to send it for histopathology. So histopathology, uh, we send the organs. So the report suggested lungs dilated alveolar spaces with Focal emphysematous change with congested red vessels. And you can see in the next structures, posterior aspect of trachea shows evidence of hemorrhage. This was the uh, finding for asphyxia. And uh, the impression was given in all the cases, it was antimortem injury. So this helped us to differentiate between postmortem phenomenon and antimortem uh, phenomena. And it became a very important document. 
So what is the role of aviation pathology? So one case we did long back. So where one of the celebrity actress Soundarya, she died in a air tra traffic accident. So here uh, the uh, challenge was uh, there were four people. So she was identified, her brother was also identified, but it was very difficult to distinguish between the co-pilot uh, and the co-passenger who was a party worker. So this is the brief facts of the case around 2004, 2004 17th April, 11 5 a.m. Cessna aircraft crash landed in an open field. So one was a female and other were, they were all burned beyond recognition. So here you can see first the breast tissue. Uh, this body, first body belonged to Soundarya. Second, you can uh, observe there. This was the aluminum foil, which we could make out on the pilot uh, hand. And he was also having one metallic pad on his trousers, where he used to record the, what all the changes in the atmospheric uh, atmosphere. So he used to record. So that also we could find. Then female passenger, breast mold, unburned piece of blue sari, which was adherent to the body under the seat belt half burn gold studded earrings. Her brother was identified by burnt wristwatch. He was wearing it had stopped at 11.30 am indicating the time of explosion. And a metal piece was clenched in his hand, pilot, identifies as part of throttle, metal button of his trouser packet and half burnt melted cell phone. So left side it belonged to actress and mid one it belonged to her brother and extreme right it belonged to the pilot. So here the histopathology finding showed marked hyperemia in the alveoli, tissue fluid in the alveolar space and show emphysematous bullet formation. So again, this lung shows evidence of sudden deceleration injury. So this aided in ruling out the mid-air explosion. The flight collided, uh, exploded after landing. Then the, again, the, it shows no soot particles in the trachea and no spot, uh, no uh, soot particles in the histopathology examination also. So finding like this helps us in charting out to the timeline of events. So microbiology, what is the uh, role of microbiology to document evidence of infection, especially in pediatric texts and treated cases. Routine cultures are taken from the blood or organ of interest. Tissue samples for microbiology are stored in sterile containers or bottles without additives refrigerated and sent to the microbiology laboratory. So this was the important branch which we depended on during the COVID times. Microbiology played a very important role. So in routine autopsy, very rarely we collect samples for microbiology. So sterile nasopharyngeal swab, one for each nostril is taken before opening the body cavity. So the organ of interest is swabbed with iodine, deep incision with a sterile blade is made and a sterile swab is taken and placed into a sterile container for cultures. So cases of bacterial meningitis, sterile swab of a brain are taken once the cranial cavity is open. So we have to open the cranial cavity and take the swab. Then case of sepsis or meningitis, culture spinal fluid. Case of endocarditis, culture heart valves. So blood cultures before dissection, heart blood or spinal fluid can be taken by a sterile needle tapping acidic fluid and dengue virus, RNA and NS1 antigen are detected. So this is one of the journal article which I found it. Postmortem diagnosis of dengue as an epidemiological surveillance tool, where they have found out dengue in the postmortem fluid. So this is one more article which tells about microbiology relation of forensic medicine in and microbiology. Sampling done in less than 24 hours postmortem before heavy manipulation or opening cavities. Puncture sites disinfected with alcohol based solutions. Subclavian main most appropriate for blood collection. Internal organs sampled in situ immediately after opening the body after searing the external surface of the organ. Separate sets of sterile instruments to avoid cross contamination. The samples collected should be sent to the laboratory within two hours when stored at room temperature. And within 48 hours when stored in refrigeration. So, organs in sterile containers, blood in EDTA tube. So biochemistry, now we know about the infamous vitreous humor and time since death correlation. Proponin 1 in cardiac deaths is of significance. 
This can come handy when there is partial coronary artery occlusion and the histopathological findings are not significant due to acute myocardial infarction and early death. Next one is serum tryptase in anaphylactic deaths. Usually tryptase is 20, uh, 5 to 20 na nanogram per ml. So it will be elevated in anaphylactic deaths. Next is one more article which I found. Diagnostic application of postmortem cardiac troponin 1 in pericardial fluid bar serum ratio in sudden cardiac death. So anaphylactic death again, it's just a, one more article in new forensic workflow for diagnosis where it says blood trip test level from the femoral artery showing 40 microgram. So radiology, so what is the role of radiology? Age estimation to identify and document injuries. Radiography whole body x-ray used to recover bullets to detect foreign bodies in bomb blast. X-ray and CT in case of child abuse, MRI in soft tissue trauma like strangulation. So this is one case we did about the Church Street bomb blast in 2014. So on 20th of December 2014, a bomb exploded on a pavement in Church Street in front of a restaurant called Coconut Grove. It expelled a number of metal pieces, nuts, bolts, and nails, injuring three passers by grievously. They were rushed to Malaya Hospital for treatment, where one of them, 37 year old woman, she was from Chennai, died. So the police have told the Murthala Deya, the Olaya, Orga, other sport of someone, this is the Saksha, the Ritali, they have asked us to collect. So here we could make out one metal piece in the skull. So two black. Irregularly shaped metal pieces were found lost in the brain parenchyma in the right front of a lobe. Diffuse subdural and subdarachnoid hemorrhage was present. So, cause of death was attributed to head injury sustained. So, next, the drug mules, also called as body packer syndrome. So, here one case where we did a 30 year old male foreign national was caught by Narcotic Control Bureau officials at KA 2016, a white colored solid elliptical substances in capsule was covered, were covered. So recently also from 15 days back, surgery department, uh, they did one more case. So here he was transferred to Victoria Hospital, Bangalore for further management. So rosette sign and double condom sign, rosette sign now it is difficult to see because they also know they are using all the sophisticated technologies. When they were used to condom, when they tie the knot, it used to appearance like a rosette, it is rod shaped like sign in the X-ray. So now it is not seen. Maximum we can by uh, the CT scan. I consulted the radiologist. So they were also not knowing much. They said one of the literature says based on the Hounsfield units, cocaine and uh, other drugs they may give different Hounsfield units on the CT. But I was not able to uh, see any uh, CT of such kind. So here uh, quantity of cocaine seized was 1.202 kilograms. So you can abnormal uh, abdominal radiography done at Victoria Hospital. It shows multiple capsules. I think around 67 capsules we recovered. So this is one more thing. It's a riddle for you. The forensic expert in me resides in me as me. He is residing in all of you as me. He is talking to you about you know who. Any cases? So this was one case where we had to do the uh, whether that person is capable of performing sex sexual intercourse or not. So that case we had, uh, the committee was constituted and all our superiors were very much tensed. So they constituted on committee comprising of forensic medicine expert, psychiatrist, urologist and physician. So that time we referred uh, certain books. So this is one of the cause of impotence in, in given in our textbook and uh, Campbell a textbook of urology was found to be very useful for us. So these are the routine investigations we did. Urine routine, hemoglobin, BTCT, uh, TCNDC, RFT, RBS, FBS and HPA1AC, lipid profile, HIV. Then hormones, these were the hormonal investigations we conducted. And radiological X-ray spine and abdominal ultrasound. So penile Doppler, but in that case, he did not agree for that. But when I inquired with the uh, urologist, so they are mainly by peak systolic velocity, they will determine. That is, if it is less than 25 centimeter per second, it suggests arterial insufficiency. 
So more than 35 centimeter per second, it says normal cavernous flow. Next one is end diastolic velocity, more than 5 centimeter per second, such as venous leak. So this is one of the report where I took from him. So these are the wave pattern. So next comes what does a forensic odontologist do? <coughs> so he takes a bite out of the crime. So here in 2011, a 15 year old male was murdered and the body was buried at a nearby farmland. So it was again uh, previous night they went to a bar. This fellow was a, uh, this person, sorry, this person was in the army and the local goons picked up a fight with him. So the, uh, the site of burial was located and proceeded with examining the remains. So body was completely covered with mud and instead of advanced decomposition, discolored and disfigured. So partial skeletonization was there and we could found two mandibles there. So the steel dental processes were present in situ in each quadrant of the mandible over first, second and third molar. So then we went to that, uh, he was command hospital and command hospital dental records showed the same. So he was identified with the help of these mandibles. And later, existing dental records of the disease as well as the DNA, again, the daughters also came, it was reconfirmed. So teeth and age determination, one more case. So here, one small child around eight years uh, was killed by her neighbor. So what he did after killing her, he strangled her. He raped her, strangled her and put the bone, body in the sugarcane field. So sugarcane crop, it takes three months to uh, grow. After three and a half months, he went there. He threw some of the remains in the cavity. So there, many animals were also slaughtered and the bones were thrown. So luckily, we got only few bones. For our luck, the mandible was intact. So all other bones were destroyed. We faced the problem because many bones we could not identify. We went to anatomy department. So we took their help and finally only few bones were belong to the human. You can see the mandible, scapula, ulna and vertebra, rest of the anim bones were animal bones. So the mandible was of human origin, belonged to a child with intact rami and coronoid process on both sides. Right condylar process not off completely. Angle of the mandible was inverted which is found in females. Alveolar sockets contain one permanent molar and two temporary molars on either side. So next we, done, we did the orthopantomogram. This report points to the age of the individual was eight plus or minus two years. So bones were uh, wrapped in clean cloth and sent for examination. So belong to a female age of the human bone 6 to 10 years, Department of Oral Medicine said 8 plus or minus 2 years. So later accused was sentenced for life imprisonment and later he committed suicide. So these were the two cases which highlight the importance of forensic odontology or examination of skeletal remains. So FSL, the importance of FSL, I think Dr. Pradeep is going to uh, speak about this. So I, I won't go in detail, only one case. So, a 55-year-old Austrian male working as a flight attendant checked into a five-star hotel in Bangalore. As he did not respond to doorbell and wake-up calls, the door, the, the door of the room was forced open only to find him dead in the bathroom. So, these are the photographs from the scene of crime. So, there were multiple blood stains in the uh, bathroom and the towels were completely covered with blood. So, these are the blood stains and... Uh, there are multiple stains on the floor also. So this is the scene of crime. So these are the autopsy findings. Again, there are multiple injuries. You can see on the limbs, you can see on the head, lacerated wounds. But the, around there are 44 injuries, but not a single wound was fatal. And when we inquired about the scene of crime, it was a highly protective, protected area and no one can get access to that area. 
So later uh, we send it for histopathologic uh, uh, forensic an analysis. Some are contained 200 ml of green fluid with un undigested mushroom. So we thought uh, in Kodai Canal and all uh, magical mushrooms are famous. We suspected it may be a case of magical mushroom poisoning, but we could not get anything. So one interesting feature was ethyl alcohol was detected, 80 mg per 100 ml of blood. Along with, we detected diphenhydramine hydrochloride. Th this was de detected around 27.75 mg per liter of blood. So the normal value is almost very less. So this indicated there may be a possibility and a scene of crime revealed multiple tablets of definite remain in the loca uh, location. So then this is the normal level of uh, definite remain and the other concentration. So 50 to 30 mg per liter is a fatal overdose. So why so much disturbance in the crime scene? So when we searched the net, many people had consumed this combination and they had told that their horror experience, this counted, it was taken from one of the internet article where he had taken four glasses of oral alcohol with 30, 300 mg of oral diphenhydramine capsules. He reported hallucination like animal sounds like tiger attack, attacking him. So many articles showed and FSL report in the scene of crime where it was very much disturbed, did not re reveal any blood stains of any other person. So based on that, we decided that because of the extreme hallucinations, the person was fighting against himself and all the things, metal objects, everything were broken in that room. Next, uh, this was the helpful in uh, FSL analysis. Even though many cases it has helped us, this was the prime case which helped in solving this one. So this case, I learned one more uh, lesson. Uh, in the local paper, somebody said the person committed suicide. Actually, this person was residing in Berlin. So there, they wrote to Prime Minister office uh, stating that again, they did the re autopsy there. Heart, we had sent for histopathological examination. Then that uh, the PM office got a letter that the doctor has stolen heart. So they have to be compensated. Then it come to the our home secretary, then I was called there. So then finally, next day again, after the examination, heart was sent to the Germany. So it is better to conduct the histopathological examination in uh, those cases as early as possible. So this is one more cases where uh, a very interesting case, how termites saved the day. So date of occurrence, crime 17-7-2007, date of examination 25-7-2007. So alleged history of fall, but suspicion regarding the cause of death. And uh, father made an allegation of homicide. So father was called in the night and the husband told that uh, his daughter is dead. So this lady had, he was a second wife. Actually, she had come to her uh, that house as a maid because the first wife was, was not feeling well. Later, this person married her. So external injuries, lacerations over left parietal region, right parietal eminence and the right ear. Internal injuries, comminuted fracture on left side of the skull and base of skull, diastatic fracture along sagittal future and right temporal future. So this was the scene of crime. That was the house. You can see the two doors. Two doors are interconnected. This is the place where you can see the termite manifestation there. And exactly below this place, the body, they said the body was here, that place. So then we started searching the scene of crime. Then we could make out in the first picture, you can see the track of track of uh, some discoloration is there. This was the room, this is the hall. And where uh, there were some blood stains were also found. So and then we started asking the villagers what might be the cause. So then they said, sir, Kuri and Adru Katmadadra, like if they kill the animal because of that, there will be a lot of termite infestation. So then we thought uh, maybe whether the termites feed on blood because the blood was here. So then we searched the literature, nowhere it says the termites feeds on blood. So then again we searched, then we came to know that the area was washed with fresh cow dung. So even though this whole area is a cow dung floor, only this area because there was blood, it was washed with cow dung. So because of the cow dung uh, is rich in cellulose, 
the termites came to feed on them. So that is why this path had this peculiar discoloration. So then th this is the picture of the skull. You can see multiple fractures of the skull. So later we asked uh, the person, uh, police to investigate and in that house only we could found a crowbar. So then the accused admitted that the first wife, when the second wife was watching TV in this room, first wife hit, it, uh, or hit her with a uh, crowbar and the body was transported and it was kept in another place to mimic, tell the, well, they told the police it was a case of fault. The blood stains on the floor covered with fresh cordon to conceal crime. So this is what this was the mechanism how it happened. So this was one important case we did very VAP case where scene of crime. Uh, one of the IAS officer he committed suicide. So here you can see the gap between the legs here. So and uh, one more uh, this one was fan was intact. So this is the shows the fan where he spent and all the uh, features of asphyxia are present in this case. This helped us to scene of crime, helped us to uh, arrive at the cause of death, one of the findings. This is one case where recently, where a person tries to commit suicide, where it is pictured. So why I am showing this, we did a seminar on this, where the many of the textbook shows, it is three to four minutes the whole uh, event occurs in three to four minutes event of hanging. But when we compared this event to our many of the, this one, it was wrong. Almost the whole event, I'm not showing full thing. Whole event was completed in within uh, one minute, 20 seconds, everything was completed. But the literature shows the uh, almost three to four minutes, they say, to complete this process. So this is one of the things. So you can see the uh, rigorous convulsions. So then about the suicide notes, this also may throw a important this one. So this person has written suicide note to police only. He has addressed pre a police area. So usually they will address to other people. This person has addressed to the police only. So my, my, like, the reason is leg pain is hurting me a lot. So now it's a era of uh, uh, Facebook. So here one person has posted uh, about his dad and he has committed suicide. So these things also helped very much in assessing the cause of uh, uh, coming to arrive at the manner of death. So this is one pay, uh, picture where this lady has taken selfie in the mobile before dying. So the driver's human ex uh, exteriors could contain the most beautiful picture. Thank you so much. I thank the organizers, uh, Dr. Arun, Dr. Chandrakan, Dr. Mandat sir, Smita and uh, all other uh, uh, colleagues and PG. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Thank you, Venkata Raghava, sir. I think it has been a hugely interesting session. And we thank, sir, for actually walking us through his enormous expertise in the field of forensic medicine by doing cases and has been so generous in sharing all these visuals. It was actually, I think it was a kaleidoscopic view of forensic medicine and how different departments, allied departments can actually contribute in a positive way to provide valid, scientifically valid uh, evidences that can be used by all stakeholders alike. We thank you, sir. And we thank the organizers for calling myself and Dr. Pradhan as chairpersons. And now I think the session is open for further discussion. I hope you will be really brimming with interest. Yes, sir, as a question. Thank you, Venkatraga, for a good session. And yes, I call it a compliment for that. Couple of clarification. The biochemistry you have mentioned, postmortem cardiac markers. Have you done any such cases in your study in BMC? No, sir. I have not. So you have given a reference of a Western reference, literature. Sir. Reference. I just want to share you. Uh, we have, I think, Manipal has presented more than a decade back. We have done actual cases yes, of uh, broad dead dead. Sudden death cases and uh, cardiac markers, troponins markers are elevated. Yes, sir. Even postpartum samples, there's evidence to suggest it's it's sustained. So 
my request is you please do it yourself yes, sir, because yes, there is facility so that yes, there will be more authenticity when you speak yes, rather than citing somebody yes, sir. so uh, probably you could have cited uh, the work done in india also yes sir. number one number two uh Anaphylaxis. Yesterday also one of your PG mentioned about triptase. Have you done triptate levels or no? No, sir. We, triptase actually we tried, sir. We could not. Uh, I think only one lab was uh, doing that. So we could not send it, sir. So because on what basis do we come to a conclusion about yesterday? Your PG also had a similar issue. The other question is impotency. Do we need to examine impotency cases in sexual assault cases? Is the fundamental doubt for me because. IPC does not talk about impotency as a criteria for a, a rape. Then why are we and the police breaking our head on so-called potency tests? Is a big question for me. I request. Uh, so these are two chair. things, sir. Yeah. yeah. Here, uh, regular police they will get the accused. Here, this case was different, sir. It's like a, there was a, he stated that it, it, uh, this is a special case. That is why we have to run all these investigations. What section is a special case, and the what sections was it about? Sir, sections I won't remember. Uh, mostly, I think uh, allegation of rape was made against exactly. me. Exactly. Rape, allegation, you don't need to be potent or important. See, the IPC is very clear. Yes, sir, yes, sir. We should educate the police and the judiciary. There's no need for import. Yes, Jagdish. I'll... In the law. Yes, sir. So oh, that was how... Uh, the Supreme Court, this case had to go to the Supreme Court also. The Supreme Court allowed in that case uh, saying that uh, the investigation can go on. They did not say potency should be done. They, they allowed his request. So, but 2013, the law changed. The case was booked, I think, in 2010. Now, sir, now we are, we are against, we are against the potency test. <laughs> Correct, sir. But it was earlier only penovaginal intercourse, and the Supreme Court had clarified. Yes, sir. But the earlier definition of rape was forceful penovaginal intercourse, and that time the Supreme Court had interpreted saying that uh, the, the the penetration, mere touching, would be also an offence. That was the Supreme Court interpretation. 2013 amendment. It is now. Part of the law itself that mere touching is enough to constitute. Now it doesn't require. 2010, sir. 2010, no. Is, sir, uh, this I thought only, I have never revealed any fair, sir. <laughs> Our no. audience, that's not. No, I sir. Thought. No, because anybody yes, can take sir. a picture. Not, yes, I'm sir. not going hanging. I'm talking about the uh, the Swamiji's photo you put. Ah, I said that by mistake, sir. Uh, that's why I put that riddle by mistake. It has come into it. And uh, last small That's the reason I put yeah. the riddle, sir. Yeah. <laughs> last suggestion was uh, histopathology. What we do is we take a bit and put all the organs back into the body rather than we don't send full heart to the uh, department of pathology. Normally we take when the especially bodies is sending outside. Take the bits whatever yes, you sir, want. Now we, yeah. now we are doing that only, sir. Now we are doing. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Thank you, sir. With the same, uh, I'll take two minutes. Uh, what Jagdish sir said about uh, this uh, rape uh, uh, accused with uh, examination, sir. Uh, in 2000, last year actually, 21, uh, there was a case uh, in Mysore, uh, Chamundi Hill, uh, uh, this gang rape case happened actually. So in that case, uh, seven accused were brought to our department. And I told, I, I called Jagdish sir also. One of the accused was juvenile. Uh, and I told police, I called the ACP, everybody, and told that there is no need and uh, there is uh, no meaning of doing it. And they told us, no, this is how we are doing, it has to be done. And they believe that some uh, ancient uh, mythological things and, <laughs> and I, was, I was made to examine and after that I was called to court. And to my surprise in the court, it was taken as a huge uh, sort of exercise. And the defense, the actually seven defenses were there and they called us on two, three days and it happened so, sir. Do we as forensic pathologists have the courage to give it right to the police? This is not required. Sir, uh, uh, anyway, I have, uh, I'm trained under you. Uh, so I told police, I will give in writing. Uh, then he said, in spite of that, uh, we... We we will provide that, 
but we request you to again give it as a matter of uh, evidence to be given so uh, i did tell tell them sir sir police comes yes. with very funny requisition sir for so examination of hand in the case of sexual offense they were uh, morning i got a call and they said that exam in the hand given the your opinion i said it is not required and uh, in two or three cases we are given like that and the second uh, one maybe i missed uh, some link uh, while you are presenting there is a case where austrian uh, uh, male who, who with 41 yes. injuries Uh, and that was due to alcohol and uh, uh, diphenhydramine yeah diphenhydramine and about the hallucinations was there any note uh, and how could we tell that uh, he injured himself under the hallucination because maybe i think i missed that link while you are presenting no the literature said it's very common to get hallucinations okay so but uh, the scene of crime we could not find anything nobody has entered okay. and so much uh, devastating effects okay. all the wine glasses were broken and all was it is uh, hand marks only i think we uh, thought he is trying to prevent somebody or something like that. Fine. Okay. thank you thing with uh, pradeep sir's thing as president of kamals i would request if the august body in the general body meeting agrees to pass a resolution uh, regarding the current trend of accused examination so either you as the current president or the next president uh, who will uh, takes over so i it's my request so that it goes as a karnataka medical legal society resolution it should sir but someone has to follow sir we can do anything but the problem is sir there we have to follow minimum to get that autopsy order sir i was behind uh, for two months almost check this and everybody we were there only sir otherwise it will very difficult sir tell we can't file the charge sheet and when you go to court also they'll just call to court they'll give warrant and tell no question <laughs> we we understand sir that is what we are discussing that we understand the change yes, but the people who should understand also they have not understood i think that is what mahavali sir sir was about to tell yes, that needs to be there needs the to be mentioned in the police, police manual manual unless it is mentioned clearly in the police manual and the government guidelines also has to come with a prescribed format this is how it should be written then only it can be done so as pradeep sir is suggesting there can be representation from the society the state subject so exactly yeah still uh, most of these are very primitive evidence based so in fact if we can go uh, post mortem sam post mortem by chemistry should be the future for us yes sir every case of sudden death broad death we can do some standard sops and then make sure they do some blood at least uh, cardiac markers can be a good very good thing we have done and there is evidence for that yes, and publish also yes sir okay thank you sir thank you respected speaker and esteemed chairperson for your insight on this topic now i call upon the chairperson to felicitate the speaker on our behalf Now I would like to call upon Dr. Jagdish N to acknowledge the chairpersons for chairing the session. Thank <laughs> you. 
it's here. Uh, Venkatraguva, another common thing which we all uh, have a small error or a missive is when we would like to preserve the visera, even though the cause of death is known, we should give the cause of death that not keep it pending. When the cause of death is not going to change, please give the cause of death. Police may say you give the cause of death, I don't want to know. It is the discretion of the, uh, the doctor. I would like to know if it is contributing or something else. To think. Yeah. No, cause of death, visera preserved. No, cause of death and visera preserved. How many cases you are doing? We are preserving the visa. Because but do you give a cause of death? In yes, sir. Yes, sir. For example, sir, I want to tell you that one high profile IS officer. Yeah. I, did, I gave the death test that is due to hanging. Then I preserved the visa. Fine. Thank I you. I had given the cause of death. This sort of a trend should happen. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Very often, when you preserve visa, we don't give final cause. Yes, sir. Yes. The FSL people might object. When you know the reason why you want to send the visa as necessary, that is a problem. No, let the so court that's decide. why we keep the... Explain why you preserved in the court. No, but they have a problem or issue with the police. Regarding the same, actually, I had a court yesterday, but it got postponed because of this. It's a road traffic accident. The cranial, uh, cerebral cranial, uh, cranial injuries were there. Cause of death given. However, blood was preserved for alcohol. I have given that cause of death. Even today, that uh, FSL report was never brought to me by the police because cause of death is already there. So they have not got the FSL report. And I was got to, no, tomorrow, in the court, they will produce that FSL and tell me to give the final opinion. Now, I have got one more case, sir, which is, uh, I am one of the accused. It is through President of India. The case is running in the uh, Medical Council now. I had given a uh, cause of death uh, as a speech uh, hanging. However, Vizra uh, preserved for chemical analysis. Now they have made me accused. What is the reason? Sir, uh, there was a uh, contents were abnormal, foul smelling in the stomach, full. And I preserved routine Vizra. I sent uh, and I received report after uh, within, uh, I think, 35 days after uh, autopsy. Autopsy says uh, poison was found uh, in only stomach, uh, not in other organs. It is a 302 case registered by the pressure. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. And assumption presumption doesn't have any scope in the court. Assumption may be plenty, but what I have done, I am just uh, informing you, this can happen and send the wrong message to the society also. And it is one of the possibility. Anyone can, person can consume poison later, suspend himself or herself. So many cases are there. Almost I have found out around 7% cases of hanging out of 669 during my PG period. Total I found around 32 cases of poison found in all parts of visera we preserved along with hanging. But we never preserved any visera for uh, uh, cause of death for visera analysis in those cases. I am speaking around 22, 23 years back what, when I was PG that period. Humble request to all the participants, please switch off your cell phones or please go out and attend the calls or make calls. I repeat, do not take calls in the hall or make calls. Thank you. Next up, next up, we have the fourth guest lecture on the topic scope of collaboration of state forensic science laboratory for authentic scientific reporting of sexual offenses including cases under POSCO Act by Dr. Pradeep Kumar MP, Joint Director, State Forensic Science Laboratories, Madiwala, Bengaluru. To chair this session, I call upon Dr. Dharmaraya Enkle, Professor and Head of Forensic Medicine, PK Das Institute of Medical Sciences, Palakkad, and Dr. Naveen Kumar T. Professor and Head of Forensic Medicine, Kempe Gowda Institute of Medical Sciences, Bangalore.
गुड मॉर्निंग वेलकम टू ऑल डेलीगेट्स विद चेयरपर्सन इनवैट द स्पीकर टू द डयास एंड ई रिक्वेस्ट मै कॉलेज टू रीड द ऑथर्स डीटेल गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल i would uh, request uh, dr pradeep kumar he doesn't need any introduction is good friend of us and uh, i've been working uh, and i had been worked under him so but still we go with the introduction so dr pradeep is a joint director technical director of forensic science services government of karnataka and he has worked in chamrajnagar medical college and rajarajeshwari medical college as professor and head chodi is a was a president of karnataka medical legal society during the year 2015 was editor in chief of the journal of south india medical legal association he has organized state conferences of commons 2015 cmes at uh, sri raja rajeshwari medical college and chamrajnagar institute of medical sciences medical legal coach for uh, karnataka police all india police duty meet since 2009 honorary guest speaker at karnataka police academy mysore police training school chanpatna am police training school elanka and igp south range since 2015 published articles in international national journals and state journals and has given lectures in various forums and is authorized chapters in textbooks so i welcome upon uh, dr pradeep kumar over to Good morning, everyone. Uh, I would like to thank the organizers of Kamal's 2022 for uh, providing me this uh, uh, platform to present the my lecture. <clears throat> so today's uh, the particular topic is the scope of collaboration of state forensic science laboratory for authentic scientific reporting of sexual offences, including cases under Boxo Act. so when i started uh, looking into what this particular topic and under uh, how i should present this lecture so that we get a complete picture about the understanding related with the sexual offence cases where we are corroborating so whom all we should corroborate to give a good reporting so that it can be considered in the i mean the conviction uh, we speak a lot about the conviction and uh, the acquittal of the sexual offence cases recently some 3 4 days back also in the newspaper there was a case where the assailant was uh, given bail just because the even though it was a pokso case the judge came to the conclusion that she was evident of the consequences what might happen so in that instance the bail was given to the assailant so this was the trend that is going on so in order to avoid this how best we can give how best uh, reporting should be there and who all should be involved so that we get give a very good uh, uh, corroborative uh, authenticated reporting so when it comes to the uh, word authentic so there are various meanings it could be a genuine it could be real valid bona fide true reliable and dependable so in the first instance i would just like to refine my for a topic as the scope of collaboration of forensic science laboratories for dependable scientific reporting so i just want to take out this authentic word and put it as a dependable so that we are depending not only the forensic science laboratory we cannot pinpoint any one particular person there are various persons involved in one particular case so this is like just a collaboration when i say collaboration it is a uh, dependable reporting of sexual offence cases including cases under oxo act so we all know that 
the sexual assault is a crime which has a devastating effect on the survivors that is the beginning of the nightmare it is not only for the victim even for the family of the victim also it is just like a nightmare where daily it will be haunting the survivor and also the family of the survivor so when we go to the little bit of uh, the statistics a total of around 4 lakh cases against the crime against the women were uh, registered across the country in the year 2021 and uh, whatever the data we are seeing it is not the exact data because most of the cases will not be reported at all because of the social stigma so many cases will not be reported so whatever the 4 lakh cases is the statistics that we are seeing it is not the exact data it could be even more where the some of the cases will not be reported again some more slides regarding the uh, statistical part this is the data regarding the actual number of the rape cases that are reported starting from 2005 till 2021 this uh, data has been taken from the ncrb records and uh, why most of the cases were not reported just because most of the cases the assailant or the um, uh, attacker will be the known offenders the, there is uh, it will be known to the victim so this may be one of the reason where the, the victim may uh, hindrance will be there on the part of the victim to give a complaint and uh, coming to the judicial uh, statistics so it is almost 160000 rape cases were pending trial in the indian courts by the end of 2020 so this is the statistics that they have that is still so many cases still it is pending with the uh, judiciary so coming to the conviction rate so why i this particular topic i want to make it as a dependable means when we talk about the conviction we say that only 27% of the cases the conviction rate is there so what happens to the remaining 73 73 will be acquitted so why it is acquitted if we cannot pinpoint on the victim we cannot pinpoint on the judiciary we cannot pinpoint on the doctors or the fsl it is a combined effect of all the thing so that goes for the conviction or the acquittal of the uh, fsl so this is how uh, we just want to bridge the first is the victim so all are interdependable in any cases so next comes the investigating officer what is the role of the investigating officer and how he has to investigate third is the doctor and the forensic scientist and fourth is the prosecution so when all the four combine together when all the four when the whatever is their role if it is done properly then definitely the conviction rate will improve so what is the role of the uh, sexual assault cases in cases of sexual assault what is the role of the victim first is that to lodge a complaint with the police so why most of the cases it may be a delay or else it may not the case may not be uh, lodged so i told you about the social stigma the victim may go home in the at the home the family members will say don't lodge a complaint it is a bad remarks who will marry you so don't do it so that may be the instance where they may not lodge a complaint second somebody in the family they may say that no this is wrong which has happened after some 2 to 3 days they may go and lodge a complaint or else due to some other beneficial or that may happen in the villages so again there will be delay in lodging a complaint or they may not lodge they may not lodge the complaint social stigma this is a very important point where the victim may not lodge the complaint known offender i already told that most of the around 98% of the cases it will be the known offender who is the assailant to give informed consent for medical examination and to divulge information for legal purpose again the role of the so many cases they have refused for the forensic examination not the medical examination for the forensic examination they may refuse at certain point of time so what we call as the informed refusal we have to take and then we have, may not be able to further go ahead with the examination so informed refusal to withstand the stigma during judicial proceedings so this is also where at times they may fed up in the court proceedings where the defense lawyer try to uh, put some uh, questions which will be which will cause an embarrassing on the part of the victim to answer those questions so in those cases they may be forced to uh, give the answers which may 
go uh, which may help the defense so this is the role of the victim then what is the role of the investigating officer so why i told you the role of the victim is they have to withstand all the pain case then definitely if in the judicial during the proceedings also if they are able to come up with the, what all the things that has happened definitely there will be more scope for the conviction so that is the role of the victim when it comes to the role of the investigating officer in sexual assault cases the investigator should first secure the scene of crime whether indoor or outdoor so this is a very important case uh, on part of the investigating officer so if the victim is alive the following point should be taken into consideration by the io while handling the victim one is the utmost sympathy and sensitivity so as it is a, i told that this is a social stigma and a lot of hindrance it will be there so it should be handled with utmost uh, sympathy and sensitivity immediate medical help rush the victim to the hospital this is of paramount importance in cases of the rape where the apart from the forensic examination medical examination and treatment is also very much important uh, and uh, when it comes to the pokso definitely a lot of injuries will be there which may be fatal injuries may also be there so medical treatment is a uh, very important forensic examination of the victim by the doctor female police officer to be present during interrogation interaction with the victim and the complete information about the victim should be obtained like the name age address occupation height marital status etc so these are all for the not only for the their investigation but also it will help for the doctor as to how they have to undergo with the medical examination part effort should be made to get the statement of the victim recorded under 164 crpc at the earliest the details of the incident should be recorded as early as uh, possible from the victim in her own statements if the victim alleges against a particular person the ground on which her suspicion is based should be asserted so this is also important as the most of the cases offenders are known offenders so on what uh, basis they are saying that uh, the victim the assailant is known to the victim has to be asserted the accused should be sent for the medical examination at the earliest so if the accused is uh, held uh, at uh, immediately then he has to be get examined at an earliest time the place of occurrence should be examined at the earliest to secure and collect all incriminating evidence available by the forensic team in order to bring out the victim and prepare her to cooperate uh, with the investigation uh, help from the ngos may be taken so just i would uh, like to show this uh, case It's just arun sir was telling about the case of the mysore where the very crucial evidences were seen at the scene of crime the police were under the impression that uh, the victim that is the boyfriend of the girl he is lying and uh, he might have called somebody he might have created it is a fabricated case they were thinking and by chance when the forensic team uh, fsl team visited the scene of crime they were able to secure some of the very crucial evidences which uh, contributed saying that the victim was present at the scene and also the assailants were also present at the scene and also when doing the examination here they were able to recover some buttons and that was uh, i mean the button loss was there in the clothes and that was recovered there condom was recovered there so that was able to bridge the gap between the victim and the assailants and the scene of crime so that uh, securing the scene of crime and the investigation as early as possible by the forensic team at the scene of crime is of very important in uh, rape cases the evidence material collected from the place of occurrence victim and suspect should be sent for forensic analysis and report should be obtained as priority basis so this uh, in fsl we are doing as such is uh, whenever the case of a rape or a pokso came and also scs take cases and also the former suicide cases are considered as priority cases and uh, the cases uh, will be dealt and report will be given within one month so this uh is considered as a priority case not only by the fsl but also the police should consider it as a priority and get the investigation done 
on a priority basis by the senior police officer. So if the victim is dead, that is the sex related homicide, preserve the scene of crime and get it examined at the earliest for incriminating evidence by the forensic team and uh, get the post-mortem examination done at the earliest. So what are the evidences that are likely to be found at the scene of crime or the seminal stains? So used condoms are the clothes, footprints, shoe prints, blood stains, blood stain pattern, bite mark saliva, hair strands, pubic hair and fingerprints. So in this particular case, this was a case of a girl where uh, uh, eight year old girl raped and murdered. So here the, uh, the assailant was uh, mainly caught because of the footprints. So he was a handicap and the footprint impressions in one, uh, for one foot was completely impression was there. And uh, beside that uh, foot, there was a half uh, impression of the foot. So this footprint, that is why I'm showing you this photograph is the importance of the scene of crime is very important securing the scene of crime and lot of evidences can be collected there. So in this case, even the seminal stains were taken, the blood stains were there and also the footprints which were able to uh, corroborate that the assailant was present at the scene of crime at that moment. So this photograph I already shown you. So this was a case of the Mysore where we got the so many crucial evidences. So apart from the evidences, we also can get the botanical evidences. The weapon of offense also can be found at the scene of crime, entomological evidences, and sometimes the drug, the rape drugs also may be found at the scene of crime. So this is just a slide for the do's and don'ts for the uh, IOs while investigating the cases of the sexual offenses. Utilize the services of FSL and FM experts on the spot thoroughly examined for presence of any hair or fiber. Suspect should be examined for the presence of hair on the pubic region in cases where there is bleeding from genitalia of the deceased or victim. So again comes the collaboration because here what we are doing is the victim examination will be done by the gynecologist and the uh, accused will be done by a forensic or any male doctor. So there should be a, the, whatever the findings that are seen in cases of the victim should be corroborated or should be that uh, whoever examines the accused should be told about the finding so that they will be able to find the particular evidences that may be found on the body of the accused. So again, the role of the collaboration in between the doctors also comes into picture in cases of the sexual offense. So even a single hair with the root if left by the accused on the scene of or the garment of the body of the deceased or a victim can link the accused with the crime through DNA profiling. So for the DNA profiling, you can make use of the FTA card. So delay in registering the FIR related to sexual offenses inconclusive of rape may be due to varied reasons. So what is the role of the doctor? The examination of the uh, case of the rape by the male, uh, I mean, by the doctor under section 164A of the CRPC. So medical examination under section 27 of the POCSO Act. So as per the section 164A CRPC, in cases of the uh, girl child, medical examination by the, these are the, some of the basic points for the doctors who uh, examines the uh, victim. So I'm mainly concentrating on the victim examination. So forensic examination of the victim of rape, the registered medical practitioner should examine. So all the details of the victim has to be recorded as to the name, age, consent to should be taken. If there is a refusal, informed refusal should be recorded. Then marks of injury, if any, of the person of the woman, the general mental condition of the woman, if it is required, can be assessed by a psychologist if it is required. Again, the uh, collaboration uh, comes into the picture. If it is required, you can take the help of the other uh, subject experts. So injury to the genitals has to be appreciated. The most likely genital injuries to be uh, injured during the vaginal sex or the posterior forte, fossa navicularis, labia minora and the hymen. So this is the picture of the lacerations. So, so the minute lacerations are recorded at the posterior portion. So again, you can see the lacerations. 
So this is treated with the toluene blue and then recorded. This is the very anal uh, lacerations and the redness that what we are, we are seeing. So depending upon the history of the case and the other findings, all the uh, document, uh, all the findings should be documented. So these are the mechanism of the injuries and the site of the injuries where it is found. So in cases of the sexual offense cases to the genital regions, these are the types of the injury types and the site where we are finding and also the mechanism how the injury is caused. So description material or the materials taken from the person of the woman, the exact time of commencement and completion of the examination, the report shall state precisely the reason for each conclusion arrived at. So all the details has to be recorded uh, in the report. The registered medical practitioner shall without delay provide the report to the investigating officer who shall forward it to the magistrate. So coming to the evidences that has to be taken by the uh, doctor during examination, one is the clothes. The clothes we all know that how it has to be taken or the victim has to stand on a piece of a paper and uh, should remove the clothes one by one so that whatever the material evidence is there, physical evidences that falls on the paper and that can be collected. So at times if the, the any small particles are there also can be collected. Next is the sanitary pad. If it is uh, sticking to the inner wear that has to be uh, collected. So it should not be taken out from the inner wave. It has to be sent along with that. So if it has come out from the inner wave, then that sticky part has to be stuck with some paper and then it has to be collected. So this is how the cloth has to be sent. So in between the clothes, there should be a piece of the paper while uh, packing so that the part of the cloth should not be come in contact with uh, each, uh, that is uh, the sleeves or the other part should not come in contact. So this is a method of uh, packing the clothes. So the condoms, if it is uh, present at the scene of crime or the, if it could be recovered, then it has to be collected. It has to be air dried before packing, sealed in the paper bags and it has to be sent. Any evidence on the body has to be sent. The head hair and the pubic hair samples has to be taken. So always it is better to pluck the hairs and then send it, not the cut end of the hairs. So again, this is how the package should be done. So whatever the material evidence that is collected has to be wrapped in a piece of paper and that has to be packed in a paper envelope and it has to be signed. Then comes the vulval swabs, vaginal swabs, cervical, anal swabs and oral swabs. Depending upon the nature of the crime that has been committed, the multiple swabs has to be taken for the examination. So again, this is how the swab has to be collected, not like this. So it should not be put in the uh, plastic envelope and then send it. So coming to the collection of the swabs, this is the collection of the swabs, always the swabs has to be rotated. So while collecting, not just rubbing the area to collect the samples, the swabs has to be rotated so that we get the complete uh, collection of the material. So the penal swabs, if it is uh, accused is examined, it, the penal swabs can be taken, the smears and the nail clippings and the nail scrapings has to be recorded. So this is how the swabs has to be taken. So the double swab technique using first a wet, then the dry swab has to be shown to improve the retrieval of material. So always it is better to take both the wet sample and the dry sample. So urine sample, vaginal wash, aborted fetus and the blood. So these are the various uh, materials that we collect during the uh, examination of the victim. The rationale for collecting the forensic evidence is to link a suspect to the victim to the of the crime. So this is the main criteria why we need to collect the evidence means We need to uh, corroborate. We need to uh, link the suspect to the victim to of the crime. So both the, the, uh, both the suspect, the victim and also the crime has to be interconnected so that that gives a very meaningful for the investigation and also the conviction. 
in order to collect the suitable forensic evidence the medical practitioner first understand the types of evidences present in the sexual assault cases that is why i told you in the beginning it depends upon the investigating officer he has to come out with the exact picture then the history provided by the victim if the victim will not give the complete history as to how it happened what was the posture where it has happened so those points if the victim will not come in completely then also the doctor will not be able to understand the case he may not be able to collect the evidences properly specimens may corroborate connect between the individuals so i told you this so the proper management of biological evidences is critical as it affects the integrity of the final results so this we have to understand the collection of biological evidences at the scene of crime and also during examination is very important because that will affect the integrity of the final results why i am showing i am telling you this is the samples that are sent by the doctors most of the time it will be degraded or something i'll show you some of the pictures how the specimens are sent and um, uh, what is the problem that is facing due to this speculation the special attention has to be paid for examination of the victim and also other steps involved in selection collection packing sealing labeling storage preservation transportation and maintenance of biological sample this is very important so collection of evidence is a time frame uh, guidelines so nature of sexual violence the history of assault is very important time lapse between the incident and the sexual violence and the examination physical findings again depend on the physical findings so within 96 hours all evidence including the swabs must be collected refrain from taking swabs for the spermatozoa if the incident is more than 72 hours so that we can defer to the history and then depending upon the history of the case and the nature of the case we can collect the evidences evidence on the outside of the body on the material such as the clothing can be collected even after 96 hours any physical evidence any physical evidence for example a hair or anything if the any foreign body material is found even after 96 hours those evidences has to be collected so if the victim is wearing the same type of clothes if she might have taken bath she might have taken bath everything might have done where the other evidences might have been lost even after 5 days also the if the victim is wearing the same clothes that has can be collected because that may contain some soil part which connect the scene of crime with the victim so reference samples are also important apart from the routine the collection of the evidences so this is the sexual assault uh, evidence kit that one can uh, have in the medical college this is this we did not had to uh, go for a complete kit even some of the whatever the materials are there that we can collect and make it as a sexual offense uh, accused examination kit and uh, preserve it so these are the things that uh, we usually require in the kit so the challenges with the medical examination the victims taking a bath or changing of clothes or report offenses when it's too late to collect a forensic medical evidence or early enough get that aids gathering the forensic medical evidence so both are important in collection of the evidence clinicians attending the victims of sexual offenses are conversant with the forensic medical evidence so this happens in most of the government hospitals especially where the forensic experts are not there the clinicians who examines the victim will not be uh, good in uh, identifying the physical evidences they may not be able to uh, identify the forensic evidence the hospitals where the victims of sexual offenses are first attended are also conversant as to how to collect and preserve the forensic medical evidence these are also the problems that we are facing so the comes the role of the forensic science laboratory so we have a mobile forensic unit scene of crime officers district scientific aid unit visit to the scene of crime for identification collection and trace evidence supporting ios at the scene of crime and analysis of the sample sent for the examination so this is the role of the forensic science laboratory uh, as of now so what is this mobile forensic unit so this is headed by a district scientific aid so this is a new thing that has come up in the even it is not functioning as of now shortly it will start functioning 
So this concept of the district scientific aid unit constitutes of one senior scientific officer, two scientific officers, and one laboratory attender. So they they will be stationed in the uh, district headquarters, and uh, SOPA officers, that is the scene of crime officers, will be stationed at each police station. This is a plan as of now, but uh, it will happen in short time. That is in probably in another one year. Some of the officers have already reported somewhere around two hundred officers. They are under the training, and they will be stationed in each police station. So one scene of crime officer will be stationed in each police station, and they come under the district scientific aid unit. The scientific team reach the scene of crime in mobile forensic unit vehicle, along with the equipments for locating, recording, and processing the physical evidences at the crime scene. The role of the district scientific aid unit is to assess the IOs in scientific investigation. to import training to ios in collection preservation of the physical exhibits to increase coordination between police forensic expert and the medical legal expert so this is the role of the district scientific aid unit so scene of crime officers is to provide the expert help at the police station level so i told you in all the cases and 3 uh, days back also one standing order has been passed where they have notified that any crime of more than 7 years it has to be investigated by a forensic team so that uh, standing order has been passed to all the police stations 3 days back the scene of crime officers will be provided with the crime investigation kit and they go to the scene of crime whatever may be the scene of crime if the, the io insists or gives a requisition they go to the scene of crime and assist the police in getting the uh, evidence collected so the mobile forensic science lab again uh, we have a uh, multiple units so this has been given to all commissionaires right now and we are getting another uh, around uh, 20 to 30 vehicles so that will be provided to all the district so this is uh, four people can be carried in that vehicle and it is a small lab setup where the uh, you know, investigations are minimum investigations are processed at the scene of crime itself and the report will be given then and there itself that is the findings will be told then and there itself to the investigating officer to carry out the investigation at a faster pace it has an exceptional uh, functional capability such as an extended space lighting built in cabinetry mobile forensic lab with the work station for identification examination collection storage of evidence right at the scene of crime It also contains the analytical chemicals, special goods of the fume disposal, isolated boxes for hazardous material analysis and supplies for the crime scene investigation. Next comes the role of the forensic scientist. Forensic scientist is responsible for analyzing the evidence in sexual offence cases. This evidence typically includes DNA and other biological evidences, toxicology samples, latent prints, and trace evidence. so that is the role of the forensic scientist whatever the evidences that uh, uh, are collected by the doctor whether it is a physical evidence or any other material samples that are sent so that will be analyzed by the forensic scientist and the report will be dispatched to the investigating officer identification of the origin typing of the blood seminal and saliva stains identification and comparison of the hairs dna profiling that is the body tissues blood etc comparison of evidence soil glass fiber paint etc personal identification for blood grouping quantification of alcohol or drugs for the presence of any toxic compounds in the liquid blood so this is the role of the forensic scientist so this is an uh, since 6 months the forensic uh, science laboratory has been using the we are not uh, i mean in the forensic science laboratory they are not getting the Uh, articles collected through police it this is the new software that has been developed that is a, a flms forensic laboratory management system so whenever there is a crime reported so immediately after reporting the crime they have to uh, register the uh, with the forensic science laboratory so qr code will be generated they have to take the copies of the qr code and wherever the investigating officer can get the evidences collected that qr code will be pasted there and it will be sent to the forensic science laboratory so the main advantage here in this particular software is the whoever is the scientific officer who will be conducting the examination will not be knowing the much details about the case he will be knowing only the history 
and also nobody will be knowing that uh, the one particular case which scientific officer has examined so that will be kept uh, the only the director will be knowing that that is on the back end while giving the report finally it has to be signed so at that time if he wants he can cross check except him and the assistant director even the scientific officer will not be knowing which case he is examining the sample will be given randomly it will be sent to the scientific officers and they have to do the uh, processing so the procedure followed is fsl case request by the ivo forwarding by the forwarding officer registration of particles at the fsl involved allocation of each article at the, to the concerned scientific division intelligent random allocation of scientific experts for analysis case prioritization so the i told you about the case prioritization in the beginning while uh, receiving the request if it is a case of a former suicide or a csd act or a, any sexual assault cases that comes under the case prioritization so if it is stick so that goes into a different allocation so that is a priority cases they do and uh, within uh, within one month within 20 days or within one month the report will be dispatched to the investigating officer shared equipment schedule and allocation the flow of reports through the approved hierarchy authenticating the report opinion certificate using the aadhar based e sign for digitally signing the reports the e sign report will be made available on the interface of the police station so the police need not have to come to the fsl to collect the reports so directly they can download the report in their police station which is digitally signed so just be, and if the police requires the any articles that has to be submitted to the court they have to come and collect the articles so that is uh, and if the police do not want the articles to be uh, presented to the court they have to sign the form 131 for which uh, which has to be signed by the uh, jfmc magistrate so if he signs and sends that then in those cases the material will be disposed by the uh, fsl so it's a small uh, a flow of uh, slides regarding the steps the generation of article smart slip the qr code which i told you registration of the case at the police station so the police police station ivo should log in a forensic case should be initiated in the flms portal user should uh, register the case by choosing the laboratory that is whether it is sfsl or the rfsl to which the case must be sent once the user enters the fir number of the case FLMS automatically fetches the case details from the police ID. So whatever the lodge the complaint is there, it will not take the crime number and all. It will not be shown in the FLMS. But if it is entered, the case number is entered by the investigating officer. The details of the case that are the complaint will be taken by into the FLMS. So uploading of the related documents, adding the article details and linking of the QR code. This is very important. They have to link the proper. Uh, document with the qr code adding the queries if the ivo wants to put some queries for the investigation then they can put the queries over there verifying the auto generated invoice so these are the various forms that are there in the flms which the police has to uh, upload add the details of the person taking articles to the fsl so all the details they did not have to provided with the passport so now they will uh, be just adding the details of the person who will be taking all the articles to the fsl add the ivo details review the details and then submit once it is submitted so it will be entered into the flms so the forwarding officer will be the dsp or the acp rank gets the list of cases and once he goes through the details again he has to forward it into the fsl he has to review the case and then he has to forward it. so downloading the final reports once the analysis is done they can download the report in the police station so again the same thing it has to be forwarded by the dsp or the asp rank and as the police station interface generating authorization letter to collect back the articles again the same thing they have to mention the name of the person who will be collecting the articles on behalf of the ivo so that will be generated and the article will be given to the same person so apart from that fsl is uh, uh, nabl accredited so 
FSL Mysore, RFSL Mysore, Mangalore, Hubli, Davangere, or NABL accredited, accredited certified. And state FSL is in the process of procurement. So as there was a change of building, so previously it was uh, accredited uh, with the NABL certification. But uh, due to the change in the building, now again uh, they have to apply and get it certified. So, so we all know that what all the things that uh, they do in the forensic uh, biology section. So they coordinate with the DNS section and the, for the DNA profiling. So that is the role of the uh, forensic scientists. But what are the problems that that we are facing there in FSL is inadequate sample, inappropriate packing materials inappropriate preservation, sample not in a fit condition for testing, and unnecessary articles should be avoided. So there are so many cases where the medical officer will send the scissors, comb, whatever the comb uh, that was used for combing, that also they will send, then the scissors will be sent. So, so those things, nail cutters, empty swabs, so whatever is there that they also send. And also the, the police, if the cost piece is sent, the police will send uh, one more uh, control sample of the cost piece and says that both the cost piece are same or not. So these are the, some of the funny questions the police also will put uh, to the FSL. Each article should be packed separately. So this is how the samples are sent to the FSL. You can see that just in a plastic uh, envelope without any uh, seal, the medical officers have been sending to the FSL. So whether it is, you can see here, just they write the article number, put one signature and in a zip lock. And you can see here the cloth, cloth has been put in a plastic uh, envelope and then it has been written something and then it has been sent. So this is how the packing is done. So even if anybody can break open and put some uh, anything, uh, other thing or they may take off. So this is how the packings have been sent uh, to them. So this is how the packing is done. So only one seal will be there and easily it can be taken out. So this is how the packing is sent. So even the clothes, so even the weapons, you can see that sharp edge, it is just covered with the paper. So by the time it reaches the uh, lab, this the whole thing will be torn. So it will be totally break open and the sharp edge will be coming out. And here in this weapon, only the one part will be protected and it is sealed. The whole thing is not so there may be blood samples in the other parts which will not be uh, taken into consideration. So this is how the uh, articles are sent. So this is a way of uh, covering the weapons, how it has to be packed properly in the, and how it has to be sent to the, for analysis. Next comes the role of judiciary. So again, when all the things, that is the victim, investigating officer, the doctor, forensic scientist, if they do completely uh, as per the norm, then definitely the role of the judiciary will be much less. The prosecution, it will be very easy for the prosecution to get the conviction. The court's casting, some of the problems with the court is the court's casting a stigma on the victim's character. So some of the judges, we recently, some I think one month back also, there was a statement from the Kerala High Court, some uh, uh, derogatory statements were uh, against the victim. So again, the victim's character also, the courts also have been putting some comments. The interpretation of the victim's consent, interpretation of the victim's consent by the courts. So it is also wrongly interpreted by the courts. Compensation to be provided under the provisions contained in the statutes. So this is uh, one thing. Uh, even the government has uh, provided the compensation for the victim. Again, this is a uh, little bit of intense and the court are making use of it and they may giving the extra compensation for the victim. The rape is to marry the victim. So this is again some of the judgments, older judgments where the uh, judges were uh, uh, asking. The justice delayed is not justice denied. So once all the Fields, all the four people combined together, definitely that is the multidisciplinary nature of criminal investigation teams means the quality of communication between the police, doctor, forensic scientists, lawyers and judges significantly influences how the forensic evidence is used in the sexual offense cases. So when all the four fields comes together, definitely we can do much better by 
integrity. So we can give justice to the victim and also the role of the police is important and also the role of the so forensic science and the doctor is important and also the testing. So all the things combined together corroboratively, the justice can be given and we can have a, uh, when all the people come together, definitely we can give the protection and also. So finally, I just want to redefine my uh, topic again, stating that the scope of collaboration between IOs, doctors and forensic scientists for dependable by or authentic scientific reporting of sexual offense cases, including the cases under the Foxo Act. So this is how I just want to redefine my uh, topic title. So this is how we can preserve the society. And finally, I would like to thank you all for the uh, to this particular topic. Thank you, Pradeep, for a elaborative voluminous presentation. Thank you, sir. Uh, presentation is open for discussion. Dr. Pradeep, it was a, a very uh, lucid presentation. I have one uh, important, uh, uh, rather two questions. Uh, one thing is you specifically said that uh, pluck the hairs, not yes. cut them while sending. Can I know what is the reason? See, here, wounds can be preserved. We, here in FSL, we are not doing mitochondrial DNA. So from the hair shafts, nothing can be recovered. So, so it, will DNA, not very, it will not blood be Blood is not sufficient? For, blood is sufficient in cases. Blood is sufficient. I'm not saying that. No, but because in, case, in already, uh, you know, we are saying that, you know, it is degrading the soul of a helpless female. When that lady, we are plucking hair. Yes, yes. I'm not is, saying that you have to pluck a cup of hair. One hair or two hairs is enough. No, because that was what was uh, uh, decided even by the Sehat group. And another important thing, uh, uh, what you told is, refrain from sending the vaginal swab after 72 hours. First permatozole. Yeah. Uh, but it has been known to be uh, viable up to five days and in some cases more than that. Because this happened with me in the court. Uh, the, uh, the, the prosecution was simply telling, doctor, you just tell me you are preserved or not. Have you taken the swab or not? They are not ready to listen about anything. You know that this it is, is not... what is happening in uh, judiciary, madam. The yeah. judges have got a very no, old, and the old age and they don't want to update the current status. So even if we say rigor mortis, they are stipulated to 12, 12, 12 years, 12 hours. So just uh, I'm giving an example of a rigor mortis. In sexual offense cases, definitely even if we say that the incident in one case, the victim was uh, somewhere, uh, the case was somewhere six months old. And it was a case of a prostitution in Dubai. And she was living with her husband in uh, Bidvi, uh, Ramnagara district. That is after six months. The police are asking for vaginal swabs, smears, everything. And even in the judge, they say, why you have not collected? Then the IO is asking, why you have not collected? So this was the question that put up in the by the judges. So uh, in that case, we did not collect it. I told them, this is a funny thing. She is living with her husband. And if you find the vaginal swabs uh, positive for the spermatozoa, what you will tell you, what you will do, what investigation you can do. But still, these are the funny things that is going on. So, but uh, theoretically, after 72 hours. Uh, yes, but the thing is but that. I am not collecting. But whatever is there, I am able to uh, make sure whatever the theoretical is there and the stipulated time is there. That I am writing in the report saying that the evidence, uh, I mean, the examination has been done more than uh, 72 hours or 96 hours after the uh, crime. So, I am not collecting any of the evidences. Pradeep. Uh, okay. Uh, 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 just one more. Regarding that uh, useless items being sent, you said comb and uh, nail yes. cutters. Because sometimes when we take the nail clippings, it may not, whatever is there in the nail, that uh, evidentiary material or in the hair, it may get retained in the comb or in the nail cutter. And that is why it is essential to send that rather than getting uh, not found in the uh, envelope that we cover. I mean, we collect nail it. cutter, when you take out the nail, hmm. the part of the evidence, whatever is the nail, that is the skin scraping, that definitely will come and you will, you will be able to connect. You need not have to look for whether it is, because if you go such a deep. No, nail cutter, I understand. Better. No, nail cutter, I understand. Ah. But comb, 
because most of the times whatever when we comb only the loose hairs will fall but only, only for the hair you use the comb yes so definitely you can by visual you can make out that uh, hair strands but if you want the dandruff and all no that no no any can... any evidentiary material loose soil or something it may get stuck in the tooth you of the comb you can just put it on the paper and then tap it so that it falls on the paper no i'm i'm just telling you that uh, uh, you know uh, as per rule we cannot say that they are all useless items because they will no, definitely what they are doing just just put in the paper i mean uh, envelope and they are sending it yeah no so I, usually but no making a generalized material, statement saying that what don't is happening is see once it is sent the number of samples uh, now already for another 5 years that whatever the evidence i mean uh, samples are there in the lab for the dna it takes another 3 to 4 years for the samples backlog samples and every year we are getting it more around 5000 samples are there for the dna profiling and uh, you know how many cases the dna profiling samples can be done per day yeah no but so uh, unnecessary evidence no, no, what i was to minimize no my intention was that in a, a forum a generalized statement ah, like okay. that uh, okay. should be avoided that is all what i was thank you uh pradeep i have i need some uh, clarification from you only is it the duty of a doctor or the police officer to justify either preservation or not preservation of these samples in the given case sir one thing is the doctor should uh, first is the doctor he should uh, say that what are the samples that is why i told you all the rules will come the when the police says about the history what is the complaint and the victim says the nature of the act then the doctor will come to the exact picture what all the samples that has to be collected so 99% okay. of cases what i have seen and many people might have seen girl and boy hand in hand 6 months 1 year 2 years 3 years sometimes 10 years also now poli- uh, parent lodge the complaint police bring them yeah, we are and we are that. examining uh, yeah, we are in such circumstances in for not preser- uh, justification for not preservation is it the io or is it the doctor only doctor we are writing sir we are not collecting any evidences in those cases we are straight away saying it is a old case and the clothes are being changed so no evidences are collected even the in the court we did not face any problem in those now cases. clipping or plucking the hairs is under issue yes sir are we not violating uh, her rights and When what is the just given... what is the justification for doctor to pluck or uh, to clip the hair or uh, nail nail okay to some extent more superficial way but otherwise uh, preservation of these things number one human rights uh, number two whether similar evidence is available in uh, accused or I the victim you, sir, that victim should be corroborated by the io only should go along with the victim and accused examination should go along no such information given by the police they compel doctor to do all these things can that i is what, uh, that is the uh, why arun sir has posted i think it's it becoming a one be a collaboration uh, can i can i slightly yes. intervene mb is becoming a personal dialogue uh, this personal lives can go on at, on a cup of coffee uh, are there policies defined by fsl what policies sir of yes. your various pro- processes is there a sop for you all sop is not there sir. you have to make them yes sir the sop night uh, uh, as you know i'm saying yes, since you're taking a joint yes. director i'll appreciate involve uh, luminaries in the field of forensic medicine and forensic science laboratories the police and judiciary make a sop is that will be a law or a guiding force for all of us there's no sop whatever you say is the bible today tomorrow another director comes that become a bible then there should be sops then only will you all be able to implement the document and policies yes sir yes, i will request you yes, pradeep uh, uh, by the next forensic conference when we meet in kamals i'll appreciate if we can uh, rather than whatever we have all uh, shared today can be available in various textbooks on websites or some things if you can take up each of the case on what evidence this is concluded biological evidence botanical evidence physical evidence x y z i'll appreciate if you please two or three cases from start to finish complete the cycle and share with us that will be enlightening all of us thank sure, you sir, sure. sir uh, uh, just same things i just wanted to tell sir just started that sop 
So you just uh, also told that idea of prioritizing cases of seven years minimum punishment so that the official team has to go and mobile units have been being arranged. All those things. Are, so can you make the SOP where you can include the medical officers? Because in the medical college is okay, but many places what happens, the medical officers is insisting to go to the crime scene rather than the police inviting the medical officer to go to the crime scene. So if you can make an SOP in such kind of cases, Sir, the FSL and doctor both I, have to go to the crime this, scene. Uh, when this uh, SOP was done, standing order was done three days back, that uh, drafting was done by me. And just I told the director that, See, we are saying that all cases, crime cases, if the punishment is more than seven years, the forensic science team should visit the scene of crime. So in those cases, why not in all the district we have a medical college and why not a post-mortem to be done in the, by a forensic expert? And But uh, I told him, but he did not put it on the paper. See, there are certain, even myself, I have just joined, I have certain uh, uh, problems there. So I just right away, I cannot put all the things. It takes time and definitely if the chance is there, if the if it is permitted, definitely I will do. As Sir was telling about the SOPs yesterday night, uh, we were discussing what all the things has to be done. So slowly, one by one, whatever the, whenever the, he told me to update with the website. So I can put up in the first uh, taking up the website and in the website, definitely the SOPs will come into feature. So that's how step by step we can go. So straight away I cannot go and uh, even just one point I was not able to convince him. He did not put it, just laughed at me and then he did not put it on paper. So that there no way the role of forensic medicine came into picture. Sir, I would like to add, add on uh, just sharing a little bit of knowledge. I come from Kerala. We have a uh, set of uh, how to examine in a sexual assault survivor or in all cases. Uh, we have a Kerala Medical Legal Code which came in uh, 2011 and the sexual assault protocol uh, examiner, uh, survivor examiner protocol which came in 2016 and which was uh, subsequently revised in 2019. And in all these, uh, we, we, we had a guideline what all to take in each, uh, each of the examination. And there was a, a line uh, in which it states reason for not collecting if any. So if it was completed, there is no this harassment question from the court side. Just share the information on this platform. Thank you. Uh, Jagdish. I'll just ask a, a small shit. I just wanted to uh, tell you in one of the cases we have done in Manipur, me and Shankar were involved. Uh, mitochondrial DNA was done. The, the, the material was sent to FSL and they got it done. So medical DNA is being done. Thank you. Good. See, all of us are following, including Kerala, the Ministry of Health guidelines, and Karnataka also has got the last column in the evidence collection, whether the reason for collecting or not collecting. So it's already there. Uh, the issue was, last night uh, I was discussing and uh, I was looking what a change on a funny side. Within four months, our uh, Pradeep Kumar has become an FSL person then from forensic. Okay, so I and Jagdish Rao were discussing that. But with your good office in FSL, the long pending desire of Kamal's right from when I was the president in 2009. So with that director at that time, so this is a pending process. So during your tenure, if we can achieve, as Pradeep Sir was also pointing it out, an SOP, which what would be the uh, uh, procedure uh, what would be carried out at FSL? What are the evidences required for that? What is the basic requirement of the doctor in collecting that? Because it should match the procedure what the FSL has. What's the turnover time? So if that comes on the website, uh, in today's context, it would be easy for all of us uh, instead of blame game, we don't want blame game. Everybody is working in the best interest of the uh, living or the deceased person or solving that crime only. Uh, the second uh, issue, uh, whatever uh, you raised, uh, that's the forum where we are always fighting it out. Uh, last week also, we have we were at uh, the uh, high, high level stakeholder meeting at Karnataka Judicial Academy. Why is police asking the question was the issue? Again, yesterday Marvelous was also, or today also Marvelous was pointing out police manual. Two abortive attempts already are done about the police manual division, but unfortunately due to the death of 
then the YSPs. The manual which was supposed to be released got uh, aborted and the person is now no longer in police force, is now in a political uh, thing. So again, we have issues in reviving that police manual back. So uh, we, Sir, we... Police manual uh, last uh, two months back, I got it updated from FSL. So it is under the prog progress. And uh, to be frank, uh, there uh, some of the DSPs from the DG office, they had called me regarding the role of the doctor and the post-mortem certificate and all. I just powered it and they had told that there is nothing like a medical legal manual which has, which is there in the old your police manual. They, they say that the lady police, uh, lady autopsy surgeon should not do autopsy. There are so many rules are there which is not there. Then he told you, please come to the officer, we will sit and do it. Then I told you, put it to the ADGP to forward a letter to the director. That never happened. I never went to the... So 2004, so this is Karnataka unfortunately passed the unnatural death that is yes, and act. In that also, so the same thing that, is, that is how it started. Regarding the question what Vrinda was raising, penetrative and non-penetrative offences, because if everybody starts uh, saying you collect evidence, Evidence should not be the prime importance of a doctor's role. Doctor's role should be the therapeutic angle. Along with that, nobody is saying we don't collect. We are saying wherever it is needed, collect. In a non-penetrative offense, but when the police puts out an issue, so during your official tenure there, I would request during your tenure, the trainings of the police officers, if you can impart, because now they find you more as an inside person of the police force. So if you put it out saying that in a non-penetrative offense, these are not required and uh, so that would reduce the burden of the FSL uh, of the unwanted sample. Uh, uh, learned uh, colleagues of forensic uh, who are sitting here, we will use our wisdom in not collecting. Arun was also pointing it out, uh, procedures over there. But, sir, but the uh, medical the officers police, will not have that liberty. I think the police officers are putting a question that Whatever the material evidence are there over the body of the victim, you please collect us. That is if, what the, if available. It if is a, uh, if available. That, that is an open question they are putting. They that are on, that the only in commissionerates, because lengthy discussion happened, only in commissionerate police this is happening. But in the rural police, still they are specifying. No, in Chamraj Nagar or Ramnagar or wherever I was, they have put only one question. If evidence is provided, seen over the body, you please collect. Only one question they, they are putting. Yes, right. We know, we are aware, police, because as I told many cases, even in Bangalore, though in spite of repeatedly telling, in accused cases, they used to ask for, please collect a sample of semen and give for DNA. Then we used to give in writing, saying that for DNA sex, semen is not required, what you have collected blood sample is more than enough, and even in spite of that, they were reluctant to accept, but this is what is there. But beyond that, if you want, you please make other arrangements for collecting semen. This is not a simple process, as you ask for collection of blood. This we have given in writing many cases, but in spite of that, that request you used to get. So that's what, if SOP is with simultaneously sharing of this information to the medical officers or to the doctors or even to the IO and also the judiciary, because they should not pose that question, why this has not, as Dr. Runda was saying, why only hairs have been cut, why you have not plucked, or why hairs have been plucked, we should have been cut, those, all Harish, these things can Harish, get you want clear. to say that there should be a common platform yes, for yes, all types agree. of investigation but together before, and then decide. That is agreed, but still that takes time. We have at least to come in taken. Mr. Pradeep, I think uh, our uh, organizers are running out of time, discussing being too lengthy. I hope there are no further questions. We thank on behalf of organizers, Pradeep, for a very good lucid presentation and raising various issues. And we thank them. I'm part of uh, chairpersons. Thanking the uh, organizers as well as uh, Pradeep to present and uh, we being the uh, chairpersons. Thank you. Thank you, esteemed speaker and respected chairpersons for this engaging session. Now I'd like to call upon the chairpersons to kindly felicitate the speaker.
certificate and child birth. <laughs> scientific session, kindly submit your PowerPoints in the Annex Hall. We will now be, we'll now be leaving for a tea break. All of you kindly proceed to the uh, examination hall and kindly assemble after 15 minutes.
హలో హలో చెక్ హలో మాకు ప్రెస్టింగ్ హలో చెక్ హలో హలో చెక్ హలో 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 చెక్ హలో 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 చెక్ హలో 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 Uh, I'd like to confirm the presence of all the finalists for the quiz. Uh, Dr. Shapali, kindly raise your hand. Dr. Georgina. Dr. Georgina. Dr. M.A.S. Anantan. Dr. M.A.S. Anantan. Dr. Ashi Verma. Dr. Agnes, Dr. Agnes, Dr. Shruti,
all the finalists for the quiz are requested to seat in the, uh, in the first row. All the finalists are requested to take a seat in the first row. I hope everyone is rejuvenated after the short break. We will now be having the finals of the PG quiz and Questa. I'd like to call upon all the finalists to come to the stage. The faculty coordinators of the quiz will now be taking over. I'd like to call upon Dr. Shankar M. Bakkar Nagar, Dr. Akshit Raj Shetty, and Dr. Aditya Rameshwara. Good morning, everyone. And now we are going to start the finals of this uh, quiz program. The six participants have been selected after the preliminary uh, quiz program, which was held yesterday in the evening. And uh, as I was already told, out of six, by your females and only one boy is here. Okay. So here in this final uh, quiz, we have five rounds, five rounds of questioning. As and when uh, we go through the rounds, uh, we'll describe about the each round as well as the rules and regulations pertaining to that particular round. And uh, 
uh, yes that's what i wanted to tell and uh, now we start the first round of questioning aditya thank you sir so good morning one and all uh, respected delegates other faculty members residents and all the contestants on stage first of all my acknowledgments to dr arun the entire department of forensic medicine dr shankar dr akshit department of forensic medicine of kmc manipal all past and present staff my teachers friends and well wishers so this is the deal there'll be five rounds round one is called direct hit there'll be six questions round two it's an infinite bounce and pounds six questions round three is a picture round there'll be 10 questions round four there'll be 10 i'll explain the details later round five is called gates up it's a rapid fire round now the first round is direct hit uh, all questions will be direct to the participants there's no passing so you can just relax if it's not your direct question and uh, scoring is uh, if it's you give a correct response it'll be plus 10 There are no negatives for wrong no answer. You have to give the answer within ten to fifteen second. So we'll go to the first question to contestant number one. This is your question. Yeah, this is your question. Ten seconds. Have an answer? No. Audience, anyone? Audience, sorry. Sorry. Uh, no, I didn't ask for this. I asked for this exhibit as a whole. What's the name of the exhibit? No, I didn't want the people to mistake it for the coin. That's why I pointed to this. Yeah, dum dum bull again. Yeah. Good answer. So the second question to contestant number two. Name the year in which coroner's inquest was abolished in India. Yes, yes. Sorry, yes. You have an answer, audience. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, I don't. You haven't picked it up already. Let me give you. Okay. Next question is to contestant number three. Mention the peculiarity of the case which involves this infamous person. 
like i want how this case related to this person was peculiar your answer audience anyone pradeep sir so you only ask me this question in manipur you ask me this question in manipur you ask me his full name also in the round okay this is a bakrakshan case the first case was superposition was used as a tool for identification sorry king is always the king sir was age Okay, the next question is to contestant number four. Identify this legendary figure. I want his full name. You have an answer? Audience, please maintain. Yeah, audience. Yeah, audience can say. Yeah, she said pass. She said pass. Yes, J P Modi. Yes, indeed. Textbook of medical jurisprudence and toxicology. Okay, uh, contestant five. This is your question. Name this condition. Audience, please keep silent. Contestant five, you have an answer. The time is up. You have an answer. Pass, audience. Yeah. Magnan syndrome seen in chronic cocaine okay, users. The last question of this round to contestant number six. Name the finding which is indicated by the arrow, the pink arrow. I want the specific name or the sign. Yeah. Give us a round of applause. Audience, I request you to please maintain silence. Please, please, I request. If we find that anybody has dropped it, do we cancel that question? Disqualify also. Please, please. Unless the keepmaster asks you, asks you to answer, please, please don't answer. So I, so I can only tell them. So I can't force them to keep. Yeah, yeah, she, she said the answer. Yeah, it was Spalding sign seen in Ludwig Peter. Now, uh, second round is an infinite bounce and bounce. Uh, the does any contestant know like how the round works? Okay. Okay, I'll I'll explain the round to you. Okay, so uh, in this round there will be passing. I'll the first question will be to contestant one. Even though it's his direct, after I finish asking the question, I'll say the pounds is open, and then the other five contestants, that is two, three, four, five, and six, all of you can pounds for the answer. That is, you have to raise your hand, you have to write your answer on a sheet of paper, and you have to and you have to ask me. I'll come and verify the answer, and then. If it's a correct, you'll get a plus twenty. If you pounce and get it correct, you'll get a plus twenty. And if you get it wrong, or if you don't give any answer, it's a minus ten. Okay. And the direct, uh, the contestant to whom I ask the direct question can answer only after I verify all the pounce answers and I say pounce is closed. Okay. So it's uh, we'll do a trial question. This is a trial question. Okay. Uh, this is to contestant number one. Now the pounce is open. Those who want to attempt this, you have to raise your hand. You have to write the answer on a piece of paper. So I'll come and verify. Yeah, this is your direct. You're not supposed to answer till I say. Now you can answer. If any of the other contestants know, you can raise your hand and attempt it on the pounds. There's a risk of negative. Okay. This is a question. Name this person and the poison used to assassinate him. The other that is, uh, I'm asking this question to contestant number one. So two, three, four, five, and six. If you want, if you know the answer, you can raise your hand. Can attempt it on the pawns, but there's a risk of a negative ten. If you get it, you'll get a plus twenty. A direct answer gets you only a plus ten. Anyone wants to pawn? It's just a trial. You can just pawn. Like you just, if you want to get a hang of the round, you can just give it a try. Anyway, it's a trial question. It's just a trial question. You can just uh, make an attempt. It may be wrong or correct. It's fine. It's fine. There's no negative. You can just. No, no. This is your direct. This. this no, no, no. You have to. You can answer only after I verify and say pounds is closed. You can just give a guess. So just a trial round. I thought that. Okay, fine. Okay, fine. Okay, fine. 
So like this, if you want, if you know the answer, you can raise your hand, you can pause, I'll come and verify. And then I'll ask the contestant to whom I ask the direct to answer. If he doesn't know it, he can pass it only to those contestants who have not paused. Okay, so assume I ask the question one to contestant one, assume two and three have paused. And then if he doesn't know the answer, if he passes, it goes to contestant four, doesn't go to two and three. Got the, uh, got the rule? Any doubts? Any doubts? Any other contestant? One, contestant one, two, three, four. Uh, pounds is plus 20 and minus 10. We are writing the answer. Yeah, yeah, it is correct. They'll get a plus 20. If it's wrong, they'll get a minus 10. Uh, bouncing, if you if you answer it on the path, it's only a plus 5. There's no negatives. There's no negative for a pass. Yeah, there's no negative. Okay, so the first question is to contestant number one. Identify the drug from the following statements. Steve Jobs said, taking this was a profound experience, one of the most important things in my life. The Beatles, John Lennon and Paul McCartney said, one of our albums was inspired by this. Caribbean Mullis, who discovered PCR said, this helped me to develop the DNA amplification technology for which I received the Nobel in 1993. Francis Crick also said he came up with the idea of double helix while on this. Just identify the drug for me. The contestant uh, one, it's a direct, you need not answer. The pounds is open, those who want to pounds can attempt it. Okay, contestant three has pounced. Yeah, she gets a plus 20. Contestant three gets a plus 20. Anyone else wants to pounce? Five, closing the pounds in five, four, three, two, one. Okay, contestant one, now we can answer. Uh, no, pass to contestant two. You have to, the pass, you have to give the answer. Pass, uh, contestant four. Contestant five. Contestant six. Uh, no, audience. Audience. Audience, anyone? Anyone? LSD, yeah. Jealous. Contestant 3 got it correct, so she gets a plus 20. So the next is to contestant number 2. This is your direct. Name the finding which is indicated by the arrow and one condition in which it is seen. Now the pounce is open. Everyone other than contestant 2 can pounce. Who all want to pounce? The yeah, pounce is open. Okay. Finding and the condition, you have to write both. Two part answer. It's a two part answer, you have to get both correct for the pounds. If it's a part pounds, also you'll get a negative. Okay, contestant four gets a plus 20. Contestant five gets a plus 20. Yeah, contestant six also gets a plus 20. Fine, the first, first part pounds. No, you can't, you can't do a part pounds. You pounds, so you get a negative. So contestant 1 gets a negative for doing a part, part pounds. Contestant 1 minus 5. Contestant uh, 4, 5, 6 get a plus 20. Uh, so, sorry, uh, minus 10. Minus 10 for contestant. Okay. Now pounds is closed. Contestant 2, you have an answer. Uh, 3 in pounds. 3, you have an answer. Uh, 4 pounds, 5 pounds, 6 pounds, 1 also. Pounds. Audience? Yeah, audience, anyone can? Yeah. Yeah, in hang. Simon Samaritz is in hang. Next question is to contestant number three. The clinical features of which poisoning is described in the classic phrase by Morton? Blind as a bat, hot as a hair, dry as a bone, red as a beet, and mad as a wet hen. This is for contestant three. The pounds is now open. Who all want to pounce? Okay, two. Uh, contestant two gets a plus 20. Who, who else wants to pounce? Minus 10 for contestant 6. Who else wants to pounce? Anyone else wants to pounce? Anyone else? I'll close it in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay. Should I have left it alone? It's a negative 10 for contestant 5. Uh, pounce is closed. It's a direct for participant 3. Uh, contestant 3. Uh, contestant 3, you have an answer? On the, on the mic, on the mic. Please use the mic. Datura. Yes. 
contestant 3 gets a plus 10. It's a negative for contestant 5 and 6 minus 10. Score is inside, sir. Akshit sir. He's sitting inside. Akshit sir is sitting inside. Sir, please. Can you please come? Okay, uh, next is direct to participant four. Rustam was a 2016 Hindi movie loosely based on the commander Nanavati was a state of Maharashtra case. And uh, as you know, he was a naval commander who was tried for the murder of Prem Mahuja, his wife's lover. Now, as per popular belief, this was a landmark case in the judicial history of India in a certain aspect, even though it's actually incorrect. Now, how is this case a landmark in the judicial history of India? The, this is for participant four. The pounds is now open. Okay, contestant two. Sorry. Okay. Uh, this was a case which happened in Maharashtra. Nanavati was a state of Maharashtra. Now, this case was a landmark in a particular aspect or a type. So, even, th even though that's incorrect, it's believed like that because this was a famous case. So, what made this case a landmark in Indian judicial history? You understand? Okay. Uh, who all want to call contestant two? Okay. Okay, contestant three. Okay. Uh, contestant, please note you have to write the answer, don't shout out the answer. Okay. Uh, participant 2 gets a plus 20. Student cost, okay. The pounds is now closed. Uh, participant 4, you have an answer. 5, 6, 1, 3. Okay, audience. Yeah. It was actually not the last jury trial. It is believed to be because of its publicity. The last jury trial was actually involving two other people. Now, uh, direct to contestant five. In 2001, which country became the first in the world to decriminalize the possession and consumption of all illicit drugs? The pounds is now open except for contestant five. Other contestants, if you want to pounds, you can talk. Okay, contestant two wants to pounds. Cover your answer. Make sure you cover it. So minus ten for contestant two. The pounds is closing in five, four, three, two, one. Participant five, you have an answer. Six. Just give a guess. Guess. Yeah, it's a geography. The clues are in the picture. If you know your geography, you can guess the answer. One. It's color coded. Uh, one year answer. Plus two. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you paused uh, and got it wrong. Uh, contestant two gets a minus and uh, three. You have an answer on the mic, please, if you want to. You can guess it. There's no negative. You can guess it. Guess it. There's no negative. Uh, no. Uh, pass. No. Uh, five. Just five. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's Portugal. It's, it's Portugal. Okay, now last question of this round, direct to participant six. What is depicted here? I want the specific name. Contestant six, uh, pounds is open. Contestant one wants to pounds. You have to write your answer. Please don't shout out the answer. Yeah, plus 20 for contestant one, plus 20 for contestant two, plus 20 for contestant three, plus 20 for four, plus 20 for five. Everyone pounds. Now it's your answer. You have an answer? Yeah, just Papay's road. Relatively easy one. Now, next is a written round. There will be 10 images. Uh, please keep your papers ready. Uh, you can attempt all 10, there are no negatives. Plus, you get a plus 10 for a correct answer. 
and uh, there are some questions with more than one part. Part points will be applicable. Yeah, any other scores? Contestant, please keep a track of your scores also. So, if, like, if you want, if you have any, if you have any code links. At the end of the second round, uh, the contestant one stands at ten points. Contestant Please give a round of applause. For them. Contestant two stands at fifty points. Contestant three stands again at fifty points. Contestant four is at forty. Contestant five is at thirty. And contestant six is at uh, thirty again. So moving on, uh, simple. I'll show you the images. The questions will be there. You have to write it. Uh, plus ten for correct. There's no negative. So feel free to guess. Part points are applicable for questions with more than one. And I request the audience to please maintain silence. So this is the first question. Have a look at the image. Okay. Okay. Now, now, this is a question. What landmark judgment in India came out in 2018 due to her efforts? Anyone wants to see the picture again? Understand one. Have a look at the picture once again if you want. This is a question. What landmark judgment in India came out in 2018 due to her efforts? Contestants. Audience, please maintain silence. Okay, move, um, moving on to the second question. Name the phenomenon. Audience, please, please, so request, please maintain silence. Okay, question three. Name this torture method. You want to have a look at the picture again? Name this torture method. I want the specific. Done? Question 4. Have a look at this picture. Okay. Name is claim to shame in the annals of forensic medicine. Yeah, this crime. Yeah, how how is he in famous or infamously famous? Or what did he do so that he is infamous? This, is this picture. I don't need his name. I just need what he did, or how is he infamous? Okay. Question number five. Have a look at this picture. Okay. Name the act against which she protested for 16 years by fasting. If you give the abbreviation, you'll get uh, 5. If you write the full expanded answer, you'll get uh, full 10. This is a picture. Which act did she protest for 16 years by doing a hunger strike? Question 6. Okay. Anyone wants to see a picture again? Question number six. Have a look at where the arrow is pointing. What are the findings is indicated by the arrow and name one poison producing this finding? And have a look at the picture again if you want to. Look at where the arrow is pointing. It has a specific name, that finding, and name one poison that produces this finding. Okay. Question number seven. Okay. Identify the specimen and its significance. Have a look at it. Identify and give it significance.
Okay. Question number eight. Have a look at this creature. This has three parts. Just have a look at the picture. There are three parts for this question. Identify this creature, its toxin, and the mechanism of action. This is question number eight. Have a look at the picture once again. Part one is identify, two is toxic principle, third is mechanism of action. Okay. Moving on to question number nine. Audience, please maintain silence. Had a look. Okay. Move your question. Identify the drug which was seized from the celebrity in 2001 and what is the minimum amount of the drug? Needed to be convicted under NDPS Act. You have to identify the drug and the name of it. Part 1 is drug. Part 2 is the minimum amount of drug needed to be convicted under NDPS Act. Okay. Question number 10. So the person, use your question, identify this person and the substance which is used to assassinate. Identify this person and what was the poison used to assassinate. So I think we are done with the uh, any uh, Anyone of you want to rerun on the pictures, anyone? Any question? One, understand one, two, okay. okay. Can you exchange your sheets? Like, can one, uh, can one give it to two, two give it to one? Yeah, yeah. Take the three, give it to, uh, no, no, really. Please write your names or, or at least your uh, number, one, two, three, four. Even if it's your number, it's okay. Okay. So these are the answers. What landmark judgment came out in 2018? Contestants? Anyone? Audience? Yeah. Supreme Court legalized and laid down guidelines for passive euthanasia. That is Pinky Virani who fought for Aruna Shangar. So the answer if it, if passive euthanasia is there, you can give full time. Someone has written passive euthanasia full time. Okay. Second question What is this phenomenon? Pilesima phenomenon. It is evaluation of firearm injuries made difficult by nucleating, by, by cutting or stabbing. If the name Pilesima is there, you can give 10. Okay. Yeah, 10. Right? No, no, there's no, uh, there's no negative. No negative. What is this torture method? Name I wanted a Spanish donkey. If you have written Spanish donkey, you can take a plus 10. If it's wooden house, you can take plus 5. So, horse, uh, 10, 10, no, 10. 10. Okay, if you have written saw horse, uh, Spanish donkey, horse, uh, no. Horse, it's evidence, the position of a horse. Evidence, yes, horse. So, Spanish donkey, you can give plus 10. Uh, uh, saddle horse, also, you can give 10. Just cause won't get, get you. Okay. Who is this? Anyone? Audience? Audience? This is Colin Pitchfork. He was the first person convicted using DNA profiling. If you have written DNA profiling, a uh, first person, we can, uh, we can give the uh, marks. Anyone? Written? I want, I want first, like he was the first person, I want the first person convicted using the NFL. That was the keyword. Now, what act was she protesting against for 16 years? Expand. 
you have written uh, for the full expansion, you can take a plus 10. Otherwise, it's 5. Some forces, special powers act. If you have written the abbreviation, it's plus 5. If you have written the full expansion, it's a plus 10. Okay. What is the ocular finding? And uh, what, name one poison. Yeah, it is KF ring seen in copper poison. KF ring, uh, even if you have written K, sorry? Just copper 5. five. Just copper 5, just KF ring 5, both together plus 10. K and ring is from copper, you can if you have written KF ring 5, copper poisoning 5, if you have written both together, plus 10. What is this specimen and its significance? Anyone? Anyone? Audience? Audience? This is the Carolina Reaper, the hottest chili pepper in the world. 1.6 million scovile heat units. Currently, this holds the Guinness record for the hottest chili pepper. Carolina Reaper. This is obvious it's a chili. You have to name. I said identify this person. <laughs> to know it's you have to write the name of the specimen. Okay, so if you have written Carolina Reaper 5, hottest chili pepper 5, both 10. Which is this creature? Okay, toxic principle. Audience? Mechanism of action. Okay, uh, it's puffer fish, it's tetrodotoxin. Uh, okay, if you have written puffer fish, you can take four. Tetrodotoxin four, if you have just written sodium channel blocker, you can take two. Fish, the name of the fish, four. Name of the toxin, four. If you have written the mechanism of action, it's uh, two. All together, you get a 10. First of all, who is this? Who is the celebrity? Okay, what drug was seized from me? Okay, what is the minimum amount of needed for conviction? It's two grams. Two. I asked minimum. Minimum amount. Two grams. Okay. Cocaine, five marks. Two grams, five marks. Both together, ten marks. Who is this person and what is the substance used to assassinate? What is the substance? It's Alexander Izmenenko and Polonium. If you have written the, his name, five. The substance, five. Both together, ten. Just uh, count the scores. And give the sheets back to the. Uh, you have to just tally the marks and write the total. Yeah, can write it. Make sure you return it to the uh, participant. You have to uh, add up and write the total out of 100. First, have a look at your answers, uh, whether it's matching with the ones displayed. If you have any clarifications, you can ask now, or else you can announce your scores to the scorer. You need a time. Contestant can just uh, like uh, tell your scores. Uh, one, how much did you get? Thirty-eight. Oh,
it was just a totaling error. It was just a totaling error. Mathematical error. That's it. Can I tell you of course so that the Yeah. Anyone else has a problem with this course? You can just uh, tell your scores. 38. Okay, contestant 1, which is the 38. Contestant 2? 35. 35. Contestant 3? 34. 34. Contestant 4? 24. 24. Contestant 5? 29. 29. Contestant 6? 33. 33. Okay. Contestant 4, how much? 24. Now, one question for the audience. Like, Lakshit sir, calculate. Who knows person? Yeah, it's not it is. I just want to see how many. Ambili Tirumalach sir, Srinivas sir, in there. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I just want to see how many people listened to your oration yesterday. Ambili Tirumalarcha Srinivas Ayanga. Tirumalarcha Srinivas. Now, this is the fourth round. Uh, this is similar to round two. There is a small difference. Uh, I'll, I'll explain to the example. First, I'll just tell you the rules. Uh, there is something called bidding. It's similar to uh, pounds and bones. The first question will be to contestant one. And uh, then I'll say bid is open. It will be open to all the other contestants. And based on the level of confidence you have in the answer, which you want to give, you can bid for a plus 20, plus 30, or a plus 40. Okay? Based on your confidence. You can bid for a 20, 30, or 40. But be careful. If you give a wrong answer, incomplete answer, or no answer, corresponding points will be deducted. Okay? Wrong answer, incomplete answer, no answer after making the bit will attract the corresponding negative points. So, if you, if you make a plus 20 bit, you give a wrong, incomplete or no answer, it's a straight minus 20. Okay. And if you don't make, if you write an answer without making a bit, by default, you'll get only plus 20. You have to make sure you give the bit uh, points and then write the answer. If you don't give a bit, default, you'll get only 20. Similar to the pounds and one, we'll do a trial. Okay, uh, Akshit sir can I just answer, uh, announce the score. Yeah. And make sure you have a calculation of the opponent's score before making the bid so that you don't attract negatives. So at the end of the third round, first participant has 48 points. Uh, oh, I you have not, you've not uh, written the names, you have just written the names, even the numbers. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, the second participant has 85 points. Third participant has 84 points. Oh. It's a neck and neck race between those two. And uh, the fourth participant has 64 points. The fifth participant has 59 points. And the last participant, sixth uh, participant has 63 points. Hope your points are all correct. Uh, so uh, you need any clarification? Uh, like we'll do a trial. Okay. Now this question, uh, I'll do a trial. The first question is to participant number one. Identify this exhibit shown here and mention one of the findings. Now the pounds is open. Those who want to pound similar, uh, sorry, those who want to bid, you have to raise your hand. Similar to that, you have to write your answer. Please don't shout out your answer. Yeah, you have to mention how many marks you want to bid for and then write the answer. Otherwise, you will get only 20, even if you know the answer with full count. You want to bid how much? 40. Okay. Yeah, it's just a try. Okay, it's correct. So you get, so this is how it works. Okay. Uh, one second. You have done only a partial and ocular finding. Okay. Yeah. You have to give a full answer. Uh, part answer, wrong answer, no answer after bidding will attract a corresponding negative. So ideally, no, 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 you can't do a partial bid. 
can build only for 20, 30, 40. You have to give the full answer, two parts. Make sure you read the full question before this. Yeah, so it's a part answer. Yeah, part, part answers, in, uh, income, uh, sorry, no answer, wrong answers will get the corresponding negative bit points. Okay, so if this was an actual question, you would have got a plus 40. Okay. Okay. Anyone else? You have a doubt? Okay, now you can answer direct. You can answer it on the direct. On the mic, please. Uh, connect T plus. Yeah. Connect T plus. I hope you got the for format. You have to first say how much you are bidding for on the mic. Okay. So that it is public to everyone. So that they don't say I manipulated the Bitcoin. You have to say it on the mic. How many points are the answer? You have to say how many points you want to bid for on the mic. Then you have to write down the complete answer. Okay. So the first question is only to contestant one. Please wait for your turn to answer. Identify the snake. Give the importance of its venom. Now the bit is open for the other contestant. Bit closes in 10. You have to identify the snake. Yeah, even the common and the venom. Two parts. 10. Okay, contestant, four. please announce how much you want to bounce for. You have to announce on the mic and then write the it's two parts. You have to write both parts. Make sure you, oh my, you want to bounce? 30. 30. 30. Okay. Contestant four wants to bounce for 30. Okay. Uh, I'm closing the, anyone else wants to bid? Four has bid. Okay. Three wants to bid. I'll check your answer. Okay. Uh, now bid is closed. How much did you bid for? 30. Uh, unfortunately, she gets a minus 30. Contestant four gets a minus 30. Uh, you want to bid? How much you want to bid? 20. 20. Okay. What's your answer? No, no. Not, you have to write it, write it. Uh, no, it's wrong. You get a minus 20. So, the, sir, uh, contestant 3 and 4 get a minus. Uh, so, 3 gets minus 20. How much people for 30? Minus 30. Okay, contestant 1. Now you can answer on the direct. There's no negatives. Okay, then uh, it's wrong anyway. Second part. Okay, fine. Uh, passes to contestant 2. Pass. Uh, three bit, four bit, five, six. Audience. Anyone? Is inland type in? Inland type in of oh, is native to Australia. Inland type. It is the most venomous snake in the world. Seen in the southwestern regions of Australia. Sorry? Yeah, most venomous. Inland type and most venomous. It's neurotoxic. Neurotoxic. Okay, so the next is to contestant number two. It's your direct. Identify the finding which is indicated by the arrow and name the technique which is used to prevent this finding. Now the bit is open to the other contestant. Could you identify the region? No, no, uh, if you want to, you can bid. You have to bid, you have to announce the points, then you have to write. Make sure you write both parts. Read the question carefully before you make the bid. Don't attract unnecessary negative. First, try to identify and then, if you don't want to make a bid, leave it. You can answer it on the pass so that you don't get a negative. Okay, I'm closing the uh, bid in five, four, three, two, and one. Just one clue for you all, uh, participants. It is a neck region. Neck region. Okay. Now, anyone wants to bid? Anyone wants to bid? Another five seconds. Another, I'll give you five seconds. If you want to bid, you have to announce. Okay, I'm closing it. If you want to bid, five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> this is not hospital. <laughs> okay, uh, bid is closed. This is a direct for con contestant two. You have an answer? 
uh, you can just attempt it's there is no negatives okay, there is no negatives two you have an answer okay pass contestant three pass four two is uh, okay uh, no uh, five contestant five contestant six uh, second part please use the mic on the mic please Don't ask. Prince Lu got in and uh, opening the skull first. Uh, I'll come back to answer. Uh, the last is for contestant one. I'll, I'll come back to answer. Contestant one, you have an answer? Prince Lu got in. Which is second first? What? The second first? Opening first. Yes. Back to the same. No, Prince Lu got in. She already answered. So he won't get. So she will get yeah. yeah, technique. I want the name of the technique. No, yeah, you will again get uh, plus five for the first part. You won because she already answered. You will get plus five. Uh, okay, I think uh, audience. Yeah, bloodless. So uh, contestant six gets a uh, plus uh, five. Contestant six gets plus five. Yeah. Okay, so next is direct to participant three. This is your question. Identify the celebrity and name the chemical combination which is responsible for his death. Two parts. Make sure you read both properly. The bed is open for the other contestants. Anyone wants to bid? Okay. Closing it in five, four, three, two, one. Okay, uh, the bid is closed. Participant 3, you have an answer? Identify? Can't even identify. There's no negative. Can't even identify who it is. Okay, fine. fine. Bruce Lee. Okay, second one. Is... Okay, uh, five. Okay. Bruce Lee and the chemical combination responsible for his death is uh, MDMA plus alcohol. No. Pass. Pretty is Bruce Lee. Okay. I don't know. Uh, one contestant, one. Speedball. Speedball, no. Uh, contestant two. You couldn't identify it as Bruce Lee. Okay. Audience, can you? Okay. I want the drug that he took before he died. I want the name. Yeah, I asked the chemical combination. So he died of brain edema that was secondary to some something else. Okay, fine. Uh, this was the answer I was looking for. He took the drug equijesic, which had aspirin and meprobamate. He developed an anaphylactic reaction to it. She gets uh, contestant four gets a plus five for identifying contestant four gets plus five. Okay, next is uh, to contestant number four. It's your direct. Identify this person and name one active principle of the poison used to assassinate him. No, no it's your direct. It's your direct. You can wait. Uh, now, now the bid is open. Anyone else? If you want to, you can bid starting now. Contestant force direct. Other participants, if you want to, you can bid. Closing the bid in 10, 9, 8. Anyone wants to bid? 7, 6, 5. Four, three, two, and one. Okay, the bid is closed. Uh, four, you have an answer. Two parts. There's no negative. You can just give it. Will you identify the person? Okay, pass. Uh, contestant five. Contestant six. Sorry? Aristotle. Uh, second part? And okay, that's wrong. Uh, contestant one, pass. Pass. Okay. Uh, Socrates and him, look. I want the active principle. Active principle. Read the question carefully. It was who's direct? Four. Okay. Uh, you have the answer, second part? Uh, uh, three, you have an answer. Okay. Uh, audience? 
కొని నా గమ సో కంటెస్టెంట్ టూ గెట్స్ ప్లస్ ఫైవ్ షీ ఐడెంటిఫైడ్ సాఫ్ట్ నెక్స్ట్ టూ కంటెస్టెంట్ నంబర్ ఫైవ్ ఐడెంటిఫై దిస్ కండిషన్ the bid is open for the other contestants on the specific name bid is closing in 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 and 1 the bid is close 5 you have an answer I want a specific name. Mechanistic delusion. No. Pass contestant 6. Just guess something. Guess. There is no negative. Do you have an answer? Zero to me. No. Uh, contestant 1 pass. Do you have an answer? That's the same thing. Pass. Uh, contestant 2. Contestant 3, contestant 4. Um, it is the sexual paraphilia actually related to the uh, statues or something which he made. Name, name, name. So, pick, pick a name it, I'll give you the full turn, otherwise I'll give you the part one. Uh, pick a name. Pick, pick those uh, man, uh, pick more for Pelia, pick more for Pelia. What do you say? Part one. Can you give the part one? Five. Okay. Uh, so we will also say partly, like. Partly. Uh, uh, Sorry? No, she explained. At least if you explain it, you, I, I asked you to, if you name the specific condition, you get the full 10. I, I told you earlier. Okay, so contestant 4 uh, gets a plus Y, it's Pygmalianism. It's Pygmalianism, based on George Bernard Shaw. Falling in love with one's own creation. Pygmalianism. Okay, next is, uh, so 4 gets plus 5. Next is the last question of the round to contestant number, sorry, not last, the 6th question. Contestant 6, it's your direct. Identify the specimen and mention one use. The bid is open to the other contestants. Anyone wants to bid? Audience, please keep quiet. Anyone wants to bid? Otherwise, I'm closing it in 5, 4, 3, 2 and 1. Okay, the bid is closed. What is 1, 6? You have an answer? No. Yes. Okay, fine. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It was okay. Audience? Again, sir, you had asked me this question. Okay, sir. <laughs> you had asked me this question. <laughs> This is Sola Pithor, Indian Cork. Okay. Okay, to identify. Okay, so all up with our Indian cock, Apte uh, Virus, to, yeah, sorry. No, 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 this question, I didn't mean the picture, question. Uh, so, I think no one answered, okay. So, next is to contestant number one. Identify this person and his infamous connection with India. This is the direct to participant one, others can bid starting now. Audience, please maintain silence. Participant, if you want to, you can make a bid, otherwise I'm closing it in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Participant 1, you have an answer. 2, please do a try. 
There is no negatives. Q, you have an answer? Three, four, five, six. Audience. Yeah. Warren Anderson, he was the CEO of Union Carbide responsible for the Bhopal gas tragedy. Okay, next is to contestant two. Name these findings, which indicated by the arrows. Is it clear the first one? And the condition in which it is seen. I want the specific name. Those who want, it's the direct for two. Those who want to bid can make a bid. Make sure you read the full question, answer all parts. Anyone is bidding? Okay, contestant three, the first bid. Contestant three wants to bid. Uh, make sure you read the full question, write the whole part. Okay. Anyone else wants to bid? No, there are three parts. There are two findings and the condition. So, yeah, both findings as well as the condition. There are th three parts. It's a three part answer. Make sure you read the question for me. You want to make a bid? Anyone else? No, no, no. Don't answer it on the mic. Okay. Dr. Anna, how much do you want to bid? You want to bid? I already lost some So no one wants to bid. Okay, I'm closing it in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, it's a direct for participant 2. You have an answer? You have to identify both findings and the condition. Okay, participant 3. Uh, this is rosary beads. Okay, uh, and bucket one. handle fracture okay. or battered baby. Yes, that's the correct answer. She you could have found. Okay, that's the correct answer. She gets a pass. Okay, she gets only five. The pass. Participant three gets five. So, no, she said both. She, she said both. Bucket handle and knobbing first. And battered baby single. Okay, next question is to contestant number three. Name the metallic poison which is an original constant of the carbonated ring 7 up. It is the direct to contestant three. Bid is open to others. You know, ask a bit. Just uh, direct for three others. If you want to, you can bid. You have to just name the poison metal. Okay. I'm closing the bid in five, four, three, two, and one. Three, you have an answer. There's no negative. You can you just give a guess. No negative. Metal, metal. Read the question. It's a metal. Okay, uh, four. Mercury. Mercury. Uh, no, first four or five. Just get some metal. Now. Six. Uh, one. On the mic, please. Eight. No. Uh, participant two. Uh, audience. Any? Audience, anyone? Okay, it's lithium. Lithium. It's called lithiated lemon soda. And last question of this round for contestant number four. Identify the culprit poison responsible for this condition. This is a direct to participant four. Others can make a bid starting now. Oh, please wait for your turn. Wait for your turn. Yes, yeah, open for if you want to bid, you can you want to bid. I know how, how much you want to bid. Plus 40. Okay. Uh, oh, no, no, no. Right here, right, right here. So contestant one is bidding for plus 40. Yes, and he gets it plus 40. It's correct. Anyone else wants to bid? Anyone else? Because I'm closing it in five, four, three. Two and one. Contestant for you have an answer. Tally do. Sorry? Uh, tally do. Tally? Tally do my. Uh, pass. Contestant five. Contestant six. Uh, one he bid. Yeah, two. Three. Audience. Yeah. He said the answer is endosulfide. Endosulfide. Uh, we have two more questions before the. La Sorry? Claw hand, crab claw hand. Crab claw hand. Crab claw. Crab claw, crab claw. Uh, 
So I had kept this for the audience, but it's fine. Uh, okay, uh, this is for uh, contestant number uh, five. Can you name the sexual paraphilia being shown in this video? Others can bid if you want to. Have a look at the video. Contestant, this is a direct for five. Others, if you want to, you can bid. Because I'm closing it in 10. You want you want to be you have to give the specific name. So I want the specific name. No, no, wait, wait, wait. Anyone anyone wants to bid? You want to bid? Announce your bid. Okay, oh, one second. Uh, announce your bid. How much do you want to bid for? 20. Plus 20. Okay. Contestant one is bidding for plus 20. I asked you for the specific name. It's wrong. Minus 20 for contestant one. I asked you for the specific name. Yeah, she gets it. Uh, how much did you bid for? You didn't announce, so it's plus 20. You, you didn't say your bid. You, you, you didn't bid. I asked you. Should have. You, it's close. Should have, I told you, you have to announce your bid. You didn't. So you get only plus 20. Uh, five, you have an answer. Proterism. Yeah, that's correct. It's uh, proterism. Now the last question of the round is to contestant number six. Can you name the countries involved in areas mark 1 and 2 and also mention the drug involved? It is, uh, who all want to bid a bit? Okay, contestant 1, how much do you want to bid for? You have to, uh, you have to write the entire answer. You have to write the whole thing. Yeah, you have to write the countries and the drug. You have to bid. What's your bid? First, make your bid. Make your bid. You're bidding? Okay, how much? How much? 20. Okay, contestant 1 is bidding for plus 20. You, have, you, you, you write, your, write your answers. Anyone else bidding? Anyone else? Read the full question. You have to answer the whole thing. Anyone else? Okay, so I'm closing the bid in 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Uh, one second, I'll just check this bit. It's a negative. It's a negative. Yeah. No, no, you have to give the entire part correct. Let's see. On the drug also. Drug, drug also. Yeah, well, unfortunately, his drug is wrong. Rest everything is correct. Okay. Uh, contestant six, you have an answer. So, uh, cont uh, contestant one gets a minus. Uh, you, you bid for 20. Minus 20. Your drug was wrong. Rest everything is correct. Contestant six, you have an answer. The Far East? Yeah, it is her direct. Yeah. Sorry? Far East and. Uh... No, name the countries. Countries. Name, name. Read the question. Next to India only. Next to India. Okay, uh, contestant two. Pakistan, okay. Iran, Iraq, okay. Myanmar. Oh, one second, one second. One. <laughs> uh, three, can you answer? Uh, please, uh, like, uh, say from one end, which end you say? Left side? Okay, first one, okay. Like, uh, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Iran. Okay, uh, uh, other side? For marijuana. And for Laos, Burma, and Thailand, for uh, manufactured drugs like cocaine. Uh, uh, pass, uh, uh, pass to contestant five. Uh, sorry, four, five, six. Oh, so it's that. Audience? Crescent. Opium, yes. It's opium. The golden crescent. He wrote everything except the he wrote cannabis. So he gets a minus 20. So that's the end of this round. Can we have the scores before we go to the last rapid fire round? Last round. This is the last round. Can we have the scores? For what? Rap
participant one, uh, Dr. M. A. S. Anandan from Kshema, is at forty-eight. Participant two, Dr. Shruti from BMC, is at ninety. Participant three, Dr. Ashi Verma from uh, Kshema, is at sixty-nine. Participant four, Dr. Agnes is from BMC. She is at sixty-four. Uh, participant five, Dr. Shifali from Shimoga Institute of Medical Sciences is at sixty-nine. And participant six, Dr. Georgina from BMC is at sixty-eight. So this is the last round. It's a rapid fire round. I hope you saw the rules. I'll uh, tell you the rules once again. This is a rapid fire round. There will be a time limit of one minute. Uh, I'll be asking six questions to each contestant. You'll get like everyone will get six questions. You have to answer it within a time frame of one minute. The timers are on your screen, and uh, for the correct answer, you'll get a plus ten, and for a wrong answer, you'll get a minus five. If you are not unsure about an answer, you can say pass. Only then will I move to the next question. Okay, and if there is time remaining at the end, I'll re-ask the questions that you have passed. Unless you say pass, I won't move on to the next question. And if there is time, I'll re-ask the question. If you have answered wrong, I won't re-ask it again. If you on, only if you pass it, I'll ask it again. Okay? Any, you need any clarification? And if you get all six correct, you get a bonus of plus ten. So a total of seventy points up for grabs. Any doubt on the points or the rounds? Anyone? Contestant one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So. The uh, first rapid fire goes to the second start the timer. Okay, so okay. contestant one, your time starts now. That is defined under which section of the Indian law? Cont audience, please. That is defined under which section of the Indian law? Uh, wrong. Brucein is the active principle of. Brucein is the active principle of. Brucein is the active principle of B R U C I N E. Brucein. Uh, N acetyl cysteine is the antidote for. N acetyl cysteine is the antidote for. Uh, correct. Plus ten. Test bullet is matched with crime bullet using. Uh, plus ten. Expand T T C. Uh, uh, right to information act was passed in which year? That is defined under which section of the? In oh, sorry, I got that wrong. Uh, Brucein is the active principle of. Expand T T C. R T I act was passed in which year? Brucein is the active principle of. Okay. Now just just to complete that. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Okay. So I think uh, he answered uh, one wrong. I then he answered N S T L S two correct and one wrong. So twenty minus five. Oh, sorry, twenty minus fifty. Okay. Next set is for contestant number two. Your time starts now. Perjury is punished under which section of the Indian law? Perjury. Perjury is punished under which section of the Indian law? Pass. Cursin is the active principle of. C U R C I N is the active principle of. Pass. Protamine sulfate is the antidote for. Pass. Technique where cervical, thoracic, abdomen, and pelvic organs are removed as separate organ blocks is known as. Pass. Expand M E R M E R. Murmur. Juvenile Justice Act was first passed in which year? Pass. Which year is punished under which section of the Indian law? I don't know any of this. Okay. Fine. Just stop it and. Okay. Uh, so contestant two, you didn't answer anything. Okay. So next is for contestant number three. Your time starts now. Indecent assault is punished under which section of the Indian law? Indecent assault is punished under which section of the Indian law? Yes. Bill of Rights is the active principle of. Bill of Rights is the active principle of. Bill of Rights is the active principle of. Yes. Flumazenil is the antidote for. Flumazenil is the antidote for. Unless you say pass, I won't move this. Organ dissection done in infectious cases where dissection is done in situ is known as. 
dash technique in situ organ dissection technique is known as one minute for the entire six questions fast fast in situ organ dissection is known as dash technique expand p a v a pawa pcp and dt act was first passed in which year indecent assault is punishable with with section of the indian law bill of rights is the act of principle of Flumazenil is the antidote for. Okay, time's up. You didn't answer anything. Well. So contestant three also didn't answer. Now next is contestant. So can I reset the contestant? Okay, reset the time. Okay. No, no. Okay, so contestant four. Your six questions and your time starts now. Causing disappearance of evidence of offence is punishable under which section of Indian law? Colchicine is the active principle of which plant? Monosodium glutamate is the chemical name of. Um, Correct. Plus ten. First fingerprint bureau in the world was established in which city? Expand B E O S. N D P S Act was first passed in which year? Causing disappearance of evidence of offence is punishable under which section of Indian law? Colchicine is the active principle of. I don't know. You can pass. I was first fingerprint bureau in the world was established in which city? Chika. Expand B E O S. N D P S Act was first passed in which year? So uh, she answered only one. Plus ten. Next, just for contestant number five. Your time starts now. Injury is defined under which section of the Indian law? Section forty-four, IPC. Correct. Uh, plus ten. Uh, Nerifolin is the active principle of. Pass. What does the term liquid gold refer to? Liquid gold. The first two. You don't know. You have to pass. Pass. What chemical was responsible for the Minamata tragedy? What chemical was responsible for the Minamata tragedy? If you don't know, you have to pass. Mercury. 10. Mercury. Correct. Plus ten. Expand N A P Q I. N A P Q I. Pass. Indian Evidence Act was passed in which year? Pass. Nerifolin is the active principle of. Pass. What does um, liquid gold refers to? Liquid gold refers to. Time is okay. I think you answered two. She answered two twenty. Okay. Next, the last rapid fire is to contestant number six, and your time starts now. Which section of the Indian law is an offshoot of McNaughton's rule? On the mic, loud, loud. Correct. Plus ten. Cantharidin is the active principle of which animal? Uh, correct. Plus ten. What is the main constituent of Mickey Finn? Chemical responsible for the 1995 Tokyo subway attack. Tokyo subway attack 1995. Expand code is C O D I S. Motor vehicles act was first passed in which year? What is the main constituent of Mickey Finn? Say part of it. So I won't ask you the next question. What are the main constituent of Mickey Finn? Time is running out. You have two more questions. Mickey Finn. What is the main constituent? A chemical response for Tokyo subway attack. Expand code is. Okay, that's time is done. You answered. I think two. Answer two. Plus twenty. So that's it. Thank you. Contestants, thanks, thanks to thanks to the organizing committee. Okay, for the okay, okay, okay. Death is def okay. Uh, death is defined under which section of Indian law? Forty six IPC. Brucine is the active principle of Strychnos nexomica. NSTL sixteen antidote for paracetamol. Test bullet match with crime bullet using comparison microscope. TTC is five phenyl tetrazolium chloride. RT act was passed in two thousand five. Perjury is punished under which section? One ninety three IPC. Cursin is the active principle of Jatropha. 
protamin sulfate and or the heparin uh, cervical thoracic and pelvic organs removed as organ blocks is uh, gons technique murmurous memory and encoding related multifaceted electroencephalographic response juvenile justice act first passed in 2000 indecent assault 354 bilavanol semicarpus flumazenil benzodiazepine antidote uh, in situ organ dissection rokitansky pava pelargonic acid vanillylamide pcp ndt act 1994 causing disappearance of evidence uh, 201 colchicine gloriosa superba monosodium glutamate is ajinomoto first fingerprint bureau is uh, calcutta or kolkata bios is brain electrical oscillation signature profiling ndps act was first passed in 1985 injury is defined under 44 ipc nerifolin active principle of yellow oleander liquid gold is urine of chronic amphetamine addicts minamata disease is mercury or specifically methyl mercury napqi is n acetyl para benzoquinonemi indian evidence act is 1872 Uh, Indian law offshoot of McNaughton Rule 84 IPC, Cantharid and Spanish fly or blister beetle, Mickey Finn is chloral hydride. 1995 Tokyo subway attack is sarin. Codes is combined DNA indexing system. Motor vehicles act is 1988. So that's it. Thank you to the contestants and thank you to the organizing committee. So we'll uh, I'll invite Shankar sir to announce the final scores. Uh, thank you, Aditya. So here I am not announcing the everybody score. Only uh, already the final sheet is with us. So I announce the winners. The second runner up is uh, uh, Dr. Jordana Jarge from BMC. The first runner up is uh, Dr. Shafali Naumani from Jomo Bengal. And. The winner is Dr. Shruti M K from Bangalore Medical College, Bangalore. Let's see all the winners, and your prizes will be given during the valedictory function. Thank you, thank you, Anand. Thank you. I'd like to now call uh, Dr. Pramod Kumar Ji to kindly felicitate our quiz masters.
So we'll begin the uh, GB meeting. Sorry for those confusions. I had made the file and I had given to one of the volunteers and uh, suddenly not able to track it. Uh, I will go ahead uh, uh, as I, I remember most of those agenda uh, till they get the file. No, that was just edited something for that. So the Kamal's office bearers uh, of 2021-22, uh, myself, uh, uh, President of Kamal's, uh, Dr. Chandrakant, Secretary, and uh, Dr. Smita, uh, Treasurer, uh, we assumed the office in the previous uh, Kamal's con, uh, uh, conference that was held virtually uh, in uh, Runda Ma'am's uh, center, Srinivas Institute. Uh, after that, uh, uh, I resumed the charge of Runda Ma'am. Uh, <coughs> Uh, she uh, transmitted uh, uh, the receipt books uh, and uh, other uh, official uh, aspects from the uh, office of Kamal's. And uh, after I took over, the membership uh, drive uh, we began. And uh, uh, from 2021 November uh, till uh, this particular conference uh, of Kamal's, the total number of uh, life uh, time uh, life membership. Uh, that membership uh, fund, membership fee was directly credited to Kamal's Corpus account that uh, we did from this time because earlier Kamal's office bearers were uh, having their uh, uh, a different account in their institution and after one completion of one particular year, they were transmitting it, uh, transferring the life membership uh, amount to uh, the Corpus account. When we began, uh, actually, there were some technical issues because the Earlier, MMC organized conference have opened an account in SBI, which they haven't closed. So when we went, they were not uh, uh, allowing us to open an account. So with that, uh, that actually we tried to make best use of that. We uh, dropped the idea of making a new account. And with uh, consultation with uh, Harish sir and Uday Shankar, we made a system where uh, the life members could directly deposit the amount into the corpus fund. And they would communicate to us uh, with their application and photograph everything. And after the Kamal's Corpus Fund in charge, Dudai would update us that receipt of that particular life membership. We would issue the life membership uh, certificate to them. So that was followed. And this was discussed in uh, EC meetings, uh, which we held a uh, couple of, uh, I mean, two EC meetings. Thank you. We held two EC meetings. Yeah, uh, so in the EC meeting also, this, this system was uh, considered as uh, more uh, user-friendly and hassle-free. Uh, so it was uh, 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 suggested and accepted also in the EC meeting that uh, we will continue this. Uh, that, uh, uh, I spoke with Nagesh, who is uh, actually working on editing the bylaws or updating the bylaws. So henceforth, uh, we are suggesting from uh, uh, our office uh, tenure, uh, that uh, the life membership uh, enrollment fee be directly credited to Commerce Corpus account uh, rather than individual institutions opening an account and at the end closing it so that we will uh, avoid that. Uh, has And uh, as far as organizing a conference and the institution, it is their uh, uh, system. Uh, as of our, our institution, it is a centralized uh, finance where uh, all amount goes to university. Uh, so it, it depends upon the institution. So... Uh, that was uh, one of the decisions taken in the EC meeting, and I'm uh, placing it in front of GBM for uh, for their view and approval. Yeah. So, uh, Vikram, somebody uh, writing it down. Call Vikram. The minutes of uh, uh, EC meeting, uh, we have uh, transmitted it uh, to all through email and. Uh, uh, WhatsApp also. Uh, all are supposed to be aware since we are having lack of time. I will summarize the uh, main uh, uh, main decisions taken in the EC meeting. EC meeting one and two both. So first one was the was to edit the bylaws uh, and uh, uh, Nagesh Pramod uh, have worked on it and uh, uh, under core committee uh, we have. Uh, edited uh, those bylaws uh, depending upon the new requirements 
uh, so uh, that is one aspect the and further it was discussed with uh, ca uh, to consider about uh, renewal of the registration uh, process and nagesh uh, has uh, uh, worked on it and even yesterday also some of the points we thought uh, would be more uh, uh, more useful for us when we go for uh, registration renewal uh, so that uh, nagesh will update it uh, uh, little later just i will complete uh, the next one was the award uh, conferring uh, till now awards were be awards were being conferred to meritorious students ugs pgs uh, everything was there but uh, some sort of streamline was required uh, as felt by all members uh, so with consensus of all members uh, members have also been uh, uh, noted here 22 members uh, were present uh, almost complete ec uh, uh, executive committee members thanks to the virtual platform which made us to come across all uh, and uh, major decisions i'll just uh, uh, convey it to the gbm here one is the awards uh, 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 what felt was uh, let there be a committee for awards so that uh, that committee will be assigned uh, uh, roles and responsibilities and tenure the tenure will be for 3 years and uh, there will be one coordinator and one advisor yeah sorry tenure is 5 years sorry tenure is 5 years there will be one coordinator one advisor and president of kamals will be rotating every year uh, and this uh, responsibilities also we have mentioned there they have to take uh, uh, the information from uh, RUHS and other team junior cities and transmit the names of uh, winners to the concerned organizing committee. That is one. And uh, some awards uh, uh, proposers who were giving earlier, they, they refused to continue with the present uh, uh, rules and regulations that the EC meeting has uh, uh, framed. Uh, so uh, uh, with that, uh, uh, I mean, with that uh, communication, the Kamals uh, has uh, thanked those proposers for giving the awards till this uh, maybe 10, 11 years. And since uh, the regulations that were made uh, were uh, not, uh, not uh, uh, that person was not willing to follow, uh, we are thanking that person for being with Kamals and conferred the awards till then. To this effect, a communication will be sent to them. And the rest of the thing is uh, 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 that... Uh, to, re to avoid the repetition of awards. We have streamlined it. Uh, the EC committee has streamlined it. Uh, like uh, a gold medal will be given by uh, uh, Kamal's and uh, Shantakumar endowment and silver medal by uh, Vrinda ma'am. Uh, and uh, third prize is bronze medal that is kept vacant till a proposer comes and claims it or sponsors it. And uh, not to uh, leave the RGH and uh, not to leave the deemed university pages the Kamals has taken the initiative and it has given this time, it was given to uh, PG top from Enepoya University. So that was not a gold or silver medal. It is to, it is to fill that gap which deemed universities were uh, not uh, being given because of lack of sponsors. Uh, that was uh, Kamals uh, as suggested, advised by senior members. Uh, Kamals has issued uh, uh, a certificate of appreciation with a memento. So uh, any any one of the life members in this GBM or anybody who are not in GBM, they are uh, requested, encouraged to, to uh, take up these uh, awards uh, to sponsor it so that uh, this uh, lacunae will be filled. The next one is uh, about the uh, Lifetime Achievement Award. Till the previous year, the awards were being given to senior faculty who got retired from services, may not be with the title of Lifetime Achievement, uh, since our our society is also growing uh, to make it more happening, we discussed in AC meeting and this uh, title has been uh, introduced, Lifetime Achievement Award. And again, it is uh, vested with the uh, awards committee uh, and uh, uh, very objective scale has been prepared. And uh, based on that, the senior advisor uh, who is in the awards committee and with all members who, who represents different uh, cadres and generations of life members of Kamals. So based on that uh, that uh, objective scale, this time Dr. Veena Vaswani from Enepoya was uh, selected uh, and she was, uh, uh, she obliged and attended and uh, received that award. So uh, this was decided in the EC meeting and subjected to be approval in GBM. 
I am placing it in front of the GPM for uh, their opinion and approval. Yeah. Other than RGHS, the gold medal uh, uh, for the first stopper uh, of the specification of uh, 30 grams, yeah, 30 grams, 30 grams of uh, silver with gold plated medal with certificate of appreciation. And second place uh, is uh, with the silver medal, 20 grams, uh, 20 grams of a silver medal with certificate of appreciation. And uh, third topper will be a bronze medal with certificate of appreciation. Uh, so this will only make uh, things more clear at par with any university that gives. So instead of uh, telling why to change something was happening till now, it is always, as we all say, change is constant and let our society also come at par with other professional bodies. That was the only sincere thought that came uh, into the current office bearers and we placed it in EC meeting and that was uh, that was uh, kept for approval in the GBM. So, uh, who are uh, documenting the minutes, please uh, note it down. Yes, ma'am. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, so the uh, the slot the place which uh, was uh, uh, filled up by commerce this time with uh, memento and certificate of appreciation that uh, Vrinda ma'am is uh, 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 taking it and uh, from next year onwards uh, gold medal. Uh, would it be ma'am let it be from next year ma'am because this year is yeah because this year things are over maybe yes ma'am uh, yeah, okay. So again, uh, I am placing it in front of the GBM, Rindaman's proposal. What I feel is uh, uh, not to redo something which was done this year. Perhaps it's a good uh, initiative. Ma'am is uh, humble, kind enough. We will uh, adopt it from next year onwards. That might be uh, more uh, reasonable. Uh, so another award uh, that was uh, I initiated. Uh, again, that was also approved in the executive committee and uh, to be placed in GBM. I instituted a, a travel grant award of 10,000 rupees cash voucher, which the recipient may claim in the next one year uh, or the next Kamal's conference happens, whichever is earlier. So this year, again, we have made a rubric for that. Uh, and uh, the same award committee, which is framed, is taking care of all awards. So uh, this will create a sort of a uniformity over a period of four, five years instead of every president, every year things changing. So that was the concept. And this year, the award was uh, uh, claimed uh, by Dr. Uh, James from CMC Vellur. He too came for inaugural ceremony and uh, received that award. So we are happy uh, that uh, it took good response. And I'm putting it in front of GPM for approval. Thank you. Uh, thank you, everybody. Yes. Yeah, it is there uh, mentioned in the criteria. It is for uh, MD Forensic Medicine, MBBS MD Forensic Medicine faculty, SRs and assistant professors. Yeah, yeah, of, of course. That is also mentioned in the guideline, life members of Kamal's should be MBBS MD working in teaching medical institution in any state of India, need not be from Karnataka, but has to be life member of Kamal's. No, it was for only in teaching medical institutions that was, yeah, sure. Uh, well, uh, uh, the plan was to 
uh, encourage because medical education and medical research go hand in hand in teaching institutions in healthcare there might be only medical legal work or may not be research related activities more so with medical education for ug and pg uh, so the conferences which the recipient would attend would help him to further his knowledge and skills in medical education and research uh, because that was the uh, criteria which uh, the award committee had when it came up with the idea yes No, ma'am. It's not not to me. There are other people. There, there, there are people. There are forensic medical postgraduates, uh, postgraduate fellows working in health service sector, insurance sector. Uh, there are person who are working as medical medical legal experts on 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 their own. And yes, to encourage research and uh, teaching. Yes, yes. Teaching and research. Uh, uh, uh. Yes, sir. That is a point. Uh, that, Sir, that. teach. Sir, uh, me... may may I, English, sir? One second, one second. Let me speak. No, no, no. Uh, sir, uh, can I complete with the permission of the chair? No, I understood what you are trying to tell, but this award is to encourage. those who are working in ug pg medical education in india in any state need not be karnataka but one has to be in teaching teaching can happen in english sir teaching to patients relatives that all is considered as teaching but what the award uh, proposer that is myself what award proposer intended is to encourage medical education ug and pg I, I i completely yes. uh, take into consideration your uh, view sir but i have a different view i just express it here on this platform that the medical education sector people are already into the education field or in the research field for their promotion etc i have, i agree it, it is to be considered to the other sectors where you can promote the, the same yeah i i i appreciate your views uh, dr azim please uh, yeah i appreciate your views and there are many other members who are there who will be willing to take up this is not the end of the awards this is just a, just one of the award there are many others who may who may come forward to encourage different categories okay. it is always there yes no but still uh, your uh, your concepts are good but uh, there are many other who might come tomorrow right yeah there is it's a, your suggestions are well taken but not Thank to you. change the criteria of this award it may somebody else may come tomorrow let us be hopeful thank, thank you. you thank you uh, so uh, with that uh, that was, those were the main uh, aspects which were taken in ec meeting and on some personal sure. context some displeasures were expressed and sir yes so bronze will sponsor sir yeah. name of my mother chandra shetty bronze will sponsor rs category bronze bronze medal will sponsor for pg pg ug pg no ah, okay both ug pg will sponsor so no okay. dr vinay shetty has uh, come forward to sponsor third place third topper 20 gram grams of a bronze medal with certificate of appreciation for pg topper in rghs category ug and pg topper okay ug and pg toppers in rghs category thank you uh, dr vinay uh, dr vinay please give the uh, details of Uh, under whose uh, memorial uh, uh, thing this we are going to be uh, so the next one is about uh, it is in the name of my mother late mother chandra vishti okay yes yeah, so we will we will note it down one of our uh, 
who is noting down please ask uh, sir and note it down and those were in comprehensive uh, uh, the ec meeting minutes uh, i i did not read it out just uh, i placed it uh, which was uh, requiring approval so the next uh, point is to place before the gpm the academic activities the office bearer of uh, commerce 2021 22 took uh, we are quite happy to uh, share that uh, we took it uh, at the uh, end of that pandemic uh, thing and uh, we could uh, we could conduct one forensic update actually every year jss medical college conducts forensic update cme uh, this year we conducted it uh, on virtual mode uh, because the resource faculty we involved were from uh, gujarat and uh, one from uh, uh, dubai uh, so uh, we conducted it on virtual mode and uh, uh, for that uh, we we did got the uh, you know, benefit i mean support from kamals in the form of 5000 rupees and uh, uh, after that uh, another actually uh, in the kamals uh, uh, you know, earlier year there used to be the supporting of cmes uh, and uh, uh, academic uh, 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 workshops other than conference so uh, that was there uh, which uh, was followed this year also uh, and that was uh, again certain guidelines were uh, put for that uh, that is uh, how this could be claimed and what must be the criteria to claim it that is uh, first 10 uh, uh, i mean uh, first 6 months and next 6 months of uh, of one particular year Uh, and uh, it, if it is a physical commons will support with the amount of uh, 10000 and if it is virtual it will support uh, with a uh, amount of uh, 5000 and uh, this year only one uh, uh, cma was done that is from our own institute and another uh, request has been received and uh, uh, because it was almost uh, uh, almost it was merging with the conference uh, this commons conference uh, that was taken as cma of this particular academic year only and that will be held in early december uh, from uh, dr jagdish sir of uh, vaidehi medical college yes sir yes sir he has uh, he has uh, written a request letter and i have forwarded it to the commons uh, corpus fund also and uh, uh, as uh, in the, our tenure if that happens uh, that will be considered from for audit purpose that will be considered as the monetary support given in the academic year of 2021 22 and uh, after this yeah the other criteria i think we can mail it to them sir because uh, we can save on the time yeah uh, yeah yes so and what must be the criteria to be followed a uh, very clear guidelines have been mentioned there and uh, we anyway we have a common official group we can post it in whatsapp group or email groups also we can post it so the major uh, aspects which were required to be approved by gbm i am concentrating on them and presenting and uh, next one is uh, uh, supposed to be the secretary report uh, and Uh, with secretary's uh, consent i myself will do it uh, so uh, this particular conference uh, which we conducted uh, it uh, it was uh, uh, within the format of uh, earlier commerce conferences with ata sangar oration and uh, clinical uh, i mean uh, scientific sessions and uh, uh, presentations in plenary sessions and uh, for this uh, Uh, the seed money of ten uh, thousand, which uh, Kamal gives to every office bearers, we have received it, and we have utilized it for the proceedings of the conference, and also uh, activities of the Kamal like uh, uh, like life membership enrollment and uh, certificate issuing to them, printing those uh, 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 incidental expenses which would be incurred, and uh, uh, as office bearers of this tenure, uh, we are very happy to convey that. Uh, Uh, i would request uh, dr smitha to uh, uh, announce it the life membership uh, has actually uh, when we took over from vrinda ma'am i was quite apprehensive would we be able to reach that and with vrinda ma'am's wishes and blessings we have gone more than what was done in the previous year uh, so uh, dr udayshankar has also shared the details of the 
uh, funds that were uh, uh, deposited in corpus uh, account that is with me uh, and uh, that will be considered as uh, minutes of this particular gbm meeting so i request uh, smita to just tell about the treasurer's report treasurer uh, of kamal's 2021 22 uh, as sir has already mentioned we have not opened a separate account so whatever life membership amount we received is directly transferred to corpus fund and as decided in the last meeting there was announcement in the membership fees also it was 2100 which is collected and we are very happy to announce that uh, we have registered 50 members this year and the total amount collected is uh, 155000 which is in corpus fund thank you and the uh, next agenda components are a report by uh, uh, journal of uh, karnataka medical legal society uh, i mean editor of j kamals editor of uh, uh, practical record and uh, since chandrakant is beside me uh, about uh, ats ayangar uh, fund uh, so the interest which was uh, credited uh, has been uh, issued to the current office bearers to be utilized for ATS Iyengar oration. I wrote a letter uh, to him and we have received 10,000, which is mentioned uh, in the proceedings of uh, this. Uh, and apart from that, I think the last one is the election for next office bearers. Yeah, oh, sorry. Uh, so uh, please, uh, Dr. Shankar, to. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Uh, as editor in chief of uh, Journal of Karnataka Medical Research Society, uh, I would like to tell first the statistics. Uh, this year, 2022, we got a, a subscription from uh, 36 institutions. That is the highest uh, in the last uh, uh, 10 years when I took over in 2013. In fact, I took over in uh, Mysore only. Then, uh, uh, total amount right now we have in our Journal account uh, 2,6749 rupees. Of course, this uh, last uh, issue, that is 2022 years second issue, uh, not yet to be released. And I am not sure that how much amount uh, uh, would be charged for printing of the journal, as well as posting of the same journal to all the uh, life members. So once I get uh, those details, then only I'll be able to give the final amount, how much would be there in our channel's account at this year. And uh, yes, 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 sir. Uh, first issue was for 41,000. Uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, right now I'm completing my 10th year of uh, editor in chief uh, post for. Uh, and uh, uh, that's what I'm thinking of. Uh, stepping down as uh, editor in chief. So, if anybody is interested, I definitely would happy. Uh, indexing. Indexing uh, the thing. So, that's what I, my suggestion. No, he's already made an attempt and uh, he knows, uh, like, you know, where is the lacuna and all those things. We complete that one actually it will be good and anyway the, it is the final opinion is uh, fine sir as as a general body uh, suggests i i can continue till i complete that this time. Yes, sir. thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. One more uh, thing, sir. I think uh, I spoke to Dr. Ajay regarding uh, uh, the Kamal's uh, website. Uh, may, maybe you know the status of that, sir. Dr. Ajay, please. Sir.
good afternoon uh, the kamal's uh, website was uh, maintained by itech technologies which is situated at mangalore and uh, since 2020 uh, as it decided in the general body uh, we were paying the renewal fees of rupees 6500 after that period we started demanding more for every uploading whether it's maybe uploading or whether it to remove from the website he was asking for more fees and which were not accepted by the Kamals since it may be a burden for the Kamals society. So in the last uh, executive committee meeting, it was decided to find a new vendor so that uh, the things can happen at a, what you call uh, a nominal price. Uh, sir, uh, when we got a quotation uh, last year, he was uh, for unlimited, he was quoting for 18,000 annually. And uh, when I uh, bargained, he told up to 50 uploads or whatever may be, he started quoting for 12,000 rupees annually. That is for the uh, maintenance of the domain, for the renewal, and for the uploading and uh, to keep the, main, the website active. So in my opinion, when I asked other vendors, rupees 6,500 will be too less. I request the committee members if they can uh, approve to a uh, limit of 10,000 or 12,000 whoever be the vendor that should be okay uh, sir uh, it's, it's up to 75 sir it's up to 75 Yes, sir, we are, we are doing that, sir. Sir, it's not a page, sir. 75 times. Yes, sir. It's a 75 times, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, sir, Sir, I told uh, we're in the process of, uh, of finalizing the vendors, sir. Whoever gives the best, it will be a, a place in front of the committee for the approval. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, as uh, Shankar sir told, it's not the pages. It will be the upload, number of times uploads are done. Yes, sir. But again, I'm telling sir, 6,500 should be. Huh? Yes, sir. We'll get the quotation, sir, for the fine. Uh, Hari, sir, two more scientific sessions are pending, sir. We need to make it pass. Uh, uh, and uh, about. So one more thing, sir, like uh, since uh, post graduates and undergraduates are very keen in looking up for the interesting things in the website. Suppose if we come out with our own website, like monthly or 15 days once we can put our own cases over there, interesting cases or short communications like that, so that uh, it will be much active. Yeah, that's what. So let us, that's what, let, let us not restrict for the number of uploads. Let it be open. So we should deal with that. Yeah, yeah, that's all. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, that yes, is better. Yes,
that's why we may not be able to see like if 50 life members are there if you are uploading their names in the website him that count might go up also so that's why for that uh, reason one one more small request uh, one more small request the topic comes only when there is a general body meeting i request the seniors and other colleagues uh, to go through the website to inform us what to be done for the betterment of the websites sir, sir uh, but uh, the, the things are no, sir, I'm not talking about the quotation. Even for the uploads, <coughs> design, uploads. Sir, uh, sir, I do agree, sir. We posted for a photograph of uh, Ramo, sir, and Arsu, sir, uh, for a better photo to upload in the website. I could not get it, sir. It was posted in the uh, uh, comments. Uh, Just posting in uh, WhatsApp, uh, like, uh, many times, actually, it will not uh, attract the uh, attention of everyone. Yes, sir. You can ask, okay, you can post. But you ask some of the senior people, yes, like, no, you personally you can call and like, uh, that's the way actually we have to get it. We will do that, sir. We will work for yeah. the best. Thank Only you. Only WhatsApp Thank actually doesn't work. Okay. We'll do if it best. works, fine. Otherwise, you can, you can call actually. Yes, sir. Uh, whomever you are comfortable, you can call them and they will contact. We will do, man. Thank we will do. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Ajay, for the update. Practical uh, record. Practical record, uh, Dr. Nagesh. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So, in the last year, total uh, number of uh, practical records sold was uh, 2,900. So, amount generated was, I mean, uh, royal amount, uh, royalty amount, 1,45,000. And there was a pending of, like, you know, 19,400 with uh, the publisher. So, total amount is with the publisher now 1,64,400. So with this, I think uh, one and a half lakhs, I will uh, tell them to transfer to uh, Tarpas Fund. Okay. Yeah. 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 Then I'll send to Dr. Uday yeah. Thank you. Uh, Uday has shared with me uh, and I request him to uh, present before the GBM about the Corpus Fund. So from the starting of the uh, last uh, year, December, uh, the balance brought forward was 96,895. Um, now, uh, the total amount uh, income that came into the account was, the Commerce Corpus uh, Fund account was 606,976, which was the highest probably. That is because of the Commerce Royalty Fund, which came up uh, ab about 110,000. And Kamal's con, uh, uh, Dr. Vinda, but Madam, plus Mature FT came up to 1,80,489. And uh, life membership fees of 50 members from JSS accounted 1,55,000. And the remaining amount from the interest generated. Now, the expenditure that went was for three FTs, we have kept for 2 lakh. The other one was 1,70,000 and 1,45,000. And uh, for the website maintenance, we gave the amount of 14,170 and Shanta Kumar Memorial Award for 3,250 and uh, to Commerce Office Bearers 10,000 and CME Financial Assistance for 5,000. So the remaining amount which is there now is 59,556 which will be utilized for giving the Commerce Life Membership Award and the proposed seed, CME seed, money for, seed the money for the next office bearers and Kamal's website maintenance charge and also expenses that might occur for renewal of registration of Kamal's uh, by the committee. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Uday. Uh, so the last one is supposed to be the uh, election of uh, next office bearers. Uh, about my last, Nagesh. But time, time factor. Maybe we can share on, yeah, please, uh, very brief. Yeah. So in the brief uh, to mention some of the changes, so we are proposing, uh, we already know that actually in the BMC, it is uh, the main office uh, for uh, keeping all the records of uh, thermal related activities. So we are proposing one custodian, any faculty, preferably a senior, with the in comparison with the HOD actually we will, uh, can choose and uh, who act as a, like a custodian for all the uh, documents. And we have mentioned actually what are the documents to be kept. So we, it is clearly mentioned now, so that actually they should maintain all those things. And 
it should be like a given by the that uh, the over office bearers so it should be transferred to the uh, that a custodian and one copy now as like in the previous uh, ec meeting it is approved that actually core committee uh, and uh, core committee can keep one photocopy of that one so that in case if uh, any like you know problems happens in the bnc that so that we can retrieve those uh, documents so apart from that actually we have included most of the that uh, changes which is happened in the committee like awards committee core committee so all those yeah corpus fund committee okay so uh, so all those activities mentioned very clearly which was not there earlier so and uh, even functions of those uh, committees and who are actually in charge so there are two uh, in charge of that uh, corpus fund so those functions are mentioned so it is uh, like a little more uh, like uh, detailed uh, this one by bylaws is mentioned so these are the main changes only thing is uh, i spoke to that auditor regarding that uh, renewal of uh, the uh, our uh, kamal's uh, registration so still like he told a few suggestions and he is going to like draft a few lines which we need to incorporate in the bylaws so once it comes actually we are going to include according to that one who has to like sign and all those things he wants to make it very simple because like you know, it's uh, earlier there was little complicated uh, it was not clearly mentioned in our bylaws so once actually that uh, comes we are going to include in the our uh, bylaws so these are the main changes thank arun, you arun only once just before you go for the gb uh, this uh, next office bearers your lifetime achievement award which you have uh, initiated proposed and all regarding that expenses which uh, from this year onwards that uh, approval from uh, gb for uh, from henceforth to be care, taken care by the corpus fund please just say, seek the gb approval yeah the proposal was to uh, seek uh, from the kamal's corpus fund the expenses for lifetime achievement award this year uh since the process was there uh, the current office bearers uh, has borne that uh, subjected to be approval and to be uh, taken by the kamal corpus fund later that was for the uh, approval thank you now this year we have increased the fds as uh, dr uday has told yes, so sir. we can take care of that expenses from henceforth here yeah. so subject to gb meeting approval so henceforth that this additional expenses of lifetime uh, award up to the tune yes. of 5000 rupees will be supported by corpus fund yes. because that is what we have been doing as and when the interest increases we have been increasing the support activities okay sir huh? yes and it, also it for is, this year okay. also in case if you are having a positive because you are you did uh, submit the request so if it is approved then we can even that also can be considered from this year also that is left to you sir uh, yes we obviously request it to be approved for, from this year itself and uh, it would uh, help uh, uh, our uh, committee with this thank you uh, so the last agenda is uh, for vidyalata ma'am yes ma'am other than rjhs okay uh, dr vidyalata uh, shetty ma'am she is uh, proposing uh, second topper silver medal at par with rjhs thing yes. this is for non rjhs that is deemed to be university category yes. Yes. thank you ma'am much appreciated we are we have so many benevolent persons uh, amongst us we will be expecting lot of awards uh, in the future also but the uh, only thing is let that not happen it used to be happen at random so uh, whatever it is there let it be through awards committee so that it will have more sanctity and uniformity in that uh, yes yeah yeah so uh, i again i request the proposers uh, dr vinay shetty and uh, dr uh, vidyalata ma'am to please uh, write a letter to the uh, office bearers it it has to be to the next office bearers alata okay okay so please address maybe a mail is enough uh, that you are proposing okay mine uh, jb fine uh, so the last one is uh, office bearers uh, next office bearer selection uh, till now i conducted as the president of kamals i seek maybe two more minutes uh, on my personal behalf uh, so the tenure was uh, really very fruitful for us uh, and uh, in the department obviously we are only three who are sitting here only three of us will be there and vrindavan ma'am says i am only one <laughs> uh, so uh, chandrakant and smita were there 
but uh, whom uh, i need to really acknowledge is uh, the tripod for me uh, uday shankar nagesh and pramod these three people have helped me so much that uh, because of help of them they, they did not uh, crumble it stood and thanks uday nagesh and pramod thank you so much they are <laughs> and obviously harish sir as a senior uh, advisor he was there to uh, guide always uh, thank you so much uh, sir uh, I, actually i was not into organizing things and all it was pramod who, who actually motivated me to certain extent uh, he pressurized me <laughs> to take it and uh, it, it really i hope uh, uh, we could do what best uh, was for coming from us and two more sessions are there it is not thanksgiving so uh, thank you so much and Uh, maybe we need to request inglesser as election officer to conduct the session or to you inglesser thank you as a whatever you want to call election officer or something like just nominated by coming voluntarily sitting here uh, i do accept it okay i am just uh, discussing with uh, outgoing president is there anybody who applied for uh, volunteering for uh, next period uh, election secretary Nobody. and the answer was uh, no okay in that case i think uh, our bylaws have to be very specific as per as a uh, election of office bearers of next year we have to look into that also probably next gb meeting i think we can bring that uh, more to you know when this needs little uh, ide andre nam proceedings nalli nam conference production nalli adu on part nam publish madbeku andre ill bandure gottagutadu okay yes that is what needed now okay whatever it is in good faith of kamal and uh, forensic medicine uh, subject now as a one of the officer for this election i request uh, those who are here or not here also who can volunteer for next year's tenure i request them please raise the hand preferably preference is given to those college usually who have not done previously yes i think vrinda madam last year i know that okay we are a board whatever whether boring or uh, atal bihari vajpayee it is in bengaluru only and both government only nothing no much difference will be there dilip are you volunteering or no one has to come up first you can take uh, into your uh, confidence many other people also you can execute the job yes ye ye any 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 other college shet uh, shetter togoltarante mobile shetter suras togoltara suras from which college it shema okay very good how are you who is the president 
ಎ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರು ಆಗ್ಲೇ ಒನ್ ಮಿನಿಟ್ ಒನ್ ಮಿನಿಟ್ ನೋ ಫೇರ್ ಚಾನ್ಸ್ ಶುಡ್ ಬಿ ಗಿವನ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಪ್ರಪೋಸರ್ ದಿಲೀಪ್ ನೌ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಪ್ರಪೋಸರ್ ದಿಲೀಪ್ ನೌ ಲೆಟ್ ಸಿ ಹಿ ಇಸ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸಿಂಗ್ ಒನ್ ಮಿನಿಟ್ ಏನೇ ಥರ್ಡ್ ಕಂಟೆಸ್ಟೆಂಟ್ answer is no because it is karnataka medical meanwhile the discussion is going on there was one of my idea and uh, future also we are taking so much care about our academic aspects and other things in these conferences uh, as well as uh, various cmes or otherwise also but we are not taking help uh, in respect to our health indian medical association national state level they have uh, their own sports activities they are conducting yearly or uh, whatever uh, possible ways they are conducting similarly why can't kamal say one or such uh, simple things uh, no in much investment is necessary once in year we can begin with the various sports activities what are you people propose but i propose which i play you propose what you want so the most common thing we can have and it can start from this year onwards sir i think besides studying sir please let us get it fast two more presentation sir uh two more scientific sessions are there please uh, make it fast so about uh, putting the medals on okay so shall we consider suraj as the president i want dilip to second it now thank you dilip thank you dilip yes suraj please come up with a proposed team names possibly possible names for number 1 president number 2 secretary number 3 treasurer then we can think about vice presidents and other possibly yeah yeah president secretary treasurer three are most important then vice president we can just nominate here ಆಗ್ಬೋದಲ್ಲ accept suraj please come up so as a election officer i welcome you to the kamals please shoulder the responsibility please uh, propose uh, your office bearers and uh, your aims objectives uh, in respect to next forthcoming year one year at present aim prompt to aim prompt to sir uh, this this has come as a shock so i'm not ready with the aims and objectives i'm sorry what you can do uh any time yes okay
Congratulations. Genius point. Madam. Genius point. No, no. Uh, okay. It is interpreted differently. Let's not interpret it here. Okay. Uh, just uh, I leave it to the GB to nominate uh, various vice presidents. Hello, one the vice president had a person is there. Hello, at least other I confirm only. I thank number one, all the members of uh, Kamal and uh, as well as the uh, outgoing president and the new president for uh, giving opportunity to chair this. I thank uh, one and all. So I thank uh, uh, Dr. English sir for conducting the election procedure and Congratulate Suraj for being elected as uh, President Kamal 2022-23 and uh, wish the team uh, a very uh, successful tenure. Thank you one and all. Uh, I request the volunteers to please take over and begin with the scientific session. We are running behind schedule. Thank you.
good afternoon everyone you people would have been aware of the campaign which has been done by malabar gold and diamonds now sunil kumar marketing manager of uh, malabar gold and diamonds has been brought and the lot will be chosen up by dr chandrakant dr arun and dr smita rani the first lot to be picked by dr chandrakant First winner is Dr. Vigneshwar N. P. Dr. Shivakumar P. Dr. Venkatesh. Good evening. With the permission of the chair, we'll be starting session four. That's a postgraduate oral presentation. I call upon Dr. Sujay V K. He'll be presenting a case, a study, a retrospective study on recent trends in homicides, autopsy at the Shri Kera Hospital, Hassan Institute of Medical Science, Hassan. Dr. Sujay. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Dr. Sudeep Ghe, a graduate postgraduate student from the study done 
and under the guidance of my guide, uh, Professor Sunil C. Araman, Professor and Head, Department of Forensic Medicine, uh, has an issue of mathematical science. My study is topic which I write in this uh, a retrospective study on recent printing sequence of homicide at tertiary care hospital in France. Introduction Homicide is the killing of one human being by another human being, defined in section 299 and 300 of the IPC. According to the National Crime Records Bureau, this table shows the total number of murders that happened in India and in Karnataka in the years 2020 and 2021. Need for the study. It's a doctor's duty to assist the legal authorities to interpret the injuries on the victim, thus assisting in the adjudication of the claim. Insight from the study will help to increase the efficiency of the criminal investigation system to improve the management of human resources and materials for social campaigns designed to curb the menace of murder and other violent acts. This study is important since information regarding the homicide victims from the Asian region of Karnataka is very limited and to fulfill the objectives of this objectives. Determining the social demographic factors of murder victims, identifying pattern of injuries among murder victims, identifying the type of weapons used by perpetrators, documenting the cause of death of victims and motives of perpetrators committing the homicides. Materials and methods. Study setting. This study was done under the Department of Forensic Medicine as an Institute of Medical Sciences. Study design. This is a retrospective cross-sectional study. The subjects were chosen after taking history from the English papers provided by the police and talking to relatives of the victims. Data collected from the crime investigation reports and autopsy reports of the case. Study sample phase. All murder cases adopted at Mortuary of Youth Teaching Hospital from October 2021 to September 2022 after applying the inclusion and exclusion criteria. Inclusion criteria are cases put under section 302 of the IPC when requisition for autopsy was given. Exclusion criteria is cases put under section uh, not put under section 302 IPC and exhumation criteria. Methods of data collection and analysis. Data was collected using a predetermined and pre-tested pro forma. The data was entered and analyzed in the MS Excel, expressed in percentages and proportions. chi square test was applied to test the association between variables. Results. This table, table number one, gives the age and sex group of the victims at a rate. In this table, you can see that the age group 21 to 30 and 41 to 15 have six males and three female victims, which is a total of nine each, representing 28.12% of the total murder cases. Uh, in times of the day, the homicide was got committed. Uh, during day time, eight males and six females total 14, representing 43.75% of the case, uh, murder cases. And during night time, it was 13 males and four females, total of 17, 53.12%. In one case, we kidnapped and murdered. The perpetrator did not reveal the time of the murder. Part of the body which was uh, which received the fatal wound. It received the fatal uh, wound in for 11 males and three female victims, the total, total of 14, which is 43.75 percent. Neck received the fatal injury in seven males and two females, total nine, 21.87 percent of the victims. Extremity we have uh, this, uh, is zero, and chest and up, chest received uh, the fatal injury in four male victims and abdomen in one woman and one male. Type of the weapon used. Blunt weapon was used to kill the victims, uh, 14 males and one female, which is total 15, 46.87%. Sharp weapons were used in 7 males and 2 females, total 9, 28.12%. RTA was, uh, 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 was done to uh, by dashing an uh, automobile on a female victim and works uh, with one female victim, which is 3.12 of the total murder autopsy. Cause and murder. In this table, I have classified the cause of death based on the mode of death. So, injuries causing hemorrhagic shock was the cause of death for 11 males and 4 females, total 15, which is 46.87%. Head injury causing intracranial hemorrhages was the cause of death for 7 males and 1 female, which is total 8, 25%. Mechanical asphyxia was uh, killed 2 males and 4 females, total 6, 18.75% of the victims. They were infected with injuries in one male and one female and blunt injury to the heart in one male. So total of 22 males and 10 females. What is for the homicide? Old disputes is a commonest cause behind homicide uh, in our study. Uh, with 18 males and two females, total of 20, 62.5%. Robbery was a motive behind killing two males and four females, total 6, 18.75%. And domestic violence also same, two males and four females. 
This the Kaiser test was used at home. The type of weapon used is blunt and non-blunt. Uh, Kaiser value of 6.43 and P value 0.011 is significant. And motives as old disputes and other reason. Kaiser value of 11.2097 with P value 0.03. Sex ratio, males to females 2.2 is to 1. Out of 10 females, 4 females were murdered for robbery and 4 for domestic violence, which is 1.25 among females. Majority of the victims belong to 21 to 30 and 41 to 50 year age group, 1 is to 3.5, with fatal injury inflicted on head, 1, 1 is to 2.3 by perpetrators using hard blunt weapons, 1 is to 2.1. This is because 21 to 50 year old represent the active age group and easy availability of blunt weapons in the vicinity and human tendency to target the head during a murder. Last uh, and uh, major, major cause of death is due to injuries causing hemorrhagic shock 1 is to 2.1, with the old dispute 1 is to 1.6 being the biggest motive for committing murders. This may be because of property dispute with rage leading to the time of the day is not significant because the sample size is small. This is my limitation. These are my references. Thank you, uh, thank you Dr. Sujay. A good presentation. The forum is open for discussion. Any questions? Hello. Was the questionnaire validated? The questionnaire was validated. Uh, in our department, we in our department we it is a pre-tested, predetermined pro forma was used. How was it uh, tested? What do you mean by pre-tested? What what had you done to do it pre-tested? So we refer to various studies. And what made you classify as old disputes? Sir, uh, there were interpersonal disputes among, uh, as even in the uh, English papers, sir. See, most of the cases, there will be old disputes, then only people will go and take revenge. So, yes. if uh, you put one of the causes as old dispute, then obviously the results will get skewed to one side. So, I would have preferred if you could have, in specific, would have mentioned what was the old dispute. So, sir, basically property disputes uh, in Hassan Bin. I can explain. Yes, sir. And by yes, so I have classified the cause of uh, death based on the mode of death. So injuries causing hemorrhagic shock is total 15 years. So that includes uh, uh, multiple injuries which cause hemorrhagic shock and uh, other bodily injuries which cause hemorrhagic shock. There is a blunt injury to the heart. Among infected injuries, one male and one female, the male died after 15 days following the injury. So, and, uh, uh, the uh, neck has uh, seven males and two females, total nine. So, three were uh, strangulation, three includes smothering and throttling, and three is cutthroat injuries. So, cutthroat injuries are classified under hemorrhagic uh, shock. And, uh, multiple injuries, total six. Among that, three is uh, hemorrhagic shock. The extremities is zero because the major part of all the parts of the bodies are taken in this table. And among road traffic accident, we see uh, uh, injuries to the extremities causing uh, death. So I have contributed as part of the limitation of the studies. Excuse me. Uh, just needed a clarification with what sir had asked. Old dispute, what was the time duration you have taken for that old dispute? Like, were there any stipulated time regarding that dispute or something like that? Or general terminology only? Sir, it is based on the English paper given, history taken from the English paper given by the police. So they had property disputes or uh, some... Uh, some other such disputes among uh, among relatives or friends, business disputes and uh, property disputes. Was there was there any reference uh, to categorize the old dispute and the new disputes? It was your own. 
Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sijay. We'll call the next uh, speaker, Dr. Ashi Verma. <clears throat> the presentation titled The Profiling of Sexual Assault Accused in a Tertiary Care Facility in Dakshina Kannada. Very good afternoon to the chairperson, uh, respected judges, and dear delegates. Uh, I'll be presenting a study titled as Profiling of Sexual Assault Accused in a Tertiary Care Facility in Dakshin Kannada under the guidance of Dr. Surit Chetty and Dr. Mahabalesh. Sexual assault is defined as illegal sexual contact that usually involves force upon a person uh, without consent or if the person is unable to give consent, or somebody who places the assailant in a position of trust or authority. The aim for this study was to derive the most common profile of the accused of sexual assault with the objectives to study them uh, on the basis of age groups, relationship to the survivor, location of crime, prevalence of substance abuse. We also uh, tried to find out the proportion of consensual acts as alleged by the accused. After obtaining ethical committee clearance, uh, a retrospective data collection procedure was started and the data was collected uh, of all the uh, examined sexual assault accused uh, cases from the Department of Forensic Medicine and Toxicology, KS Hegre Medical Academy, uh, which were examined between January 2015 to December 2021. Uh, we totally uh, got 100 and I'm really sorry, uh, there is some issue with the uh, animations over here. Uh, so we uh, totally we got uh, 101 cases, out of which 62% of cases were booked under POXO. That is the victims were under, the, uh, under 18 years of age. 38% of overall cases uh, were consensual in nature. Now, when we combine and uh, interlink these two findings, we saw that 18% uh, of uh, the total 38% con person consensual cases, these 18% cases are actually uh, involving victims who are under 18 years of age. And 20% uh, cases are adults who are having consensual intercourse, alleged consensual intercourse. In our study, we saw that 4% accused were minors. Only 4% accused were minors. And the maximum population of the accused uh, was in between 21 to 30 years of age. Now, when we look at this population of 21 to 30 years of age, this had the maximum ratio of having consensual relationships. That is 48%. And 39% of this age group, the alleged uh, act was consent, uh, was uh, in between lovers. When we look at the relationship with the survivor, maximum accused were known to the survivor, followed by lovers, strangers, and relatives. In our study, minors were mainly assaulted by relatives. And 96% of the lovers had taken consent in this case study. So 96% of the lovers were having consensual relationships. Outdoors was the most common location of incidents, followed by survivor's place, then accused place, and other closed spaces, and lastly, multiple places. Children were mostly targeted in outdoor areas. Luring was present in 39% of cases, and more than half of these lured cases uh, were promised marriage. In this category of promised marriage, 
95% of cases were consensual. And 81% of these people who were promised marriage were minors. 15% of the total, all the accused, give the history of consumption of alcohol during the time of incident. To summarize the results, the most common profile of the accused is a 21 to 30 year old male known to a minor girl and the most common location is outdoors. Our findings are consistent with the study of Dr. S. B. Punpale and Dr. Shita Lakshmi in terms of age. And it is also uh, zero tolerance, okay. And it is also similar to Dr. Shita Lakshmi's study in terms of location. So zero tolerance to sexual crime has downsides to it. Uh, we see pseudo rape cases these days uh, where uh, the criminal charges are put on a boy's fam a boy having consensual relationship uh, with a girl by girl's family just because of family disagreement. If the girl has not attained the age of uh, maturity, her words don't matter. She doesn't have a say and the law is bound to take action. This also violates Article 21 of the UN Convention of rights of child and acknowledging this uh, many courts including the Delhi High Court including Karnataka High Court and Madras High Court have uh, taken judgments in favor of uh, young consensual uh, sexual relationships and they have quashed many such uh, pseudo rape cases. Uh, to conclude I would like to say the, uh, uh, Andre, sorry. Thank you. To conclude, I would like to say that scientific ways of assessment of child's emotional maturity to understand the situation and to consent can pave a way forward. Thank you. Uh, nice presentation, ma'am. The study period was good. We have included for seven years, right? Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ashivarma. The forum is open for discussion. Any questions? In this period of study, seven years, how many pseudo rape cases were uh, registered, or did, did did you come across any pseudo rape cases? Sir, I was uh, no, taking I mean, retrospective like, data. Yeah. So, so whatever is in the accused file, if they are alleging the incident to be consensual, we have taken it as consensual. Yeah, four cases had injuries. Out of 101 cases, four cases had injuries. Uh, so uh, two were bite marks. One was on the forearm, left forearm, I remember, and uh, one was somewhere around the shoulder of the accused, on the accused body only, because accused file only we have taken data, and two other injuries in two other different cases, minor injuries. Okay. It is very likely that every person will uh, go for this is a defense for him. If you are taking on the basis of his uh, that uh, he is alleged it, so that is the one defense he has. He has to tell that it was consensual. So one, what uh, concrete basis we can take this as true and uh, go for this presentation? Sir, uh, if I would like to just say. I'm very junior, but it's uh, it's not our part to decide. On the it's this on the is law authority to decide. Yeah, one survey kind of okay. Yeah. How can we we take the word of accused, we take the word of victim? Yes. Not yet. I'm yeah, I'm planning to add more data actually for occupation and education. For that also ethical clearance is done, but uh, processing is not done. Thank you. We have the next presenter, Dr. Agnes. He'll be presenting the topic titled uh, Ruptured Stomach Hemorrhagic Necrosis, a rare case.
Good afternoon all. Myself, Dr. Agnes Jestri, finally a post a postgraduate student from BMCRI. I am here to present a rare case of stomach uh, stomach hemorrhagic necrosis, uh, which had rupture. And I have done this presentation under the guidance of Dr. Venkatrakava and Dr. Nadrajan. Sudden and unexpected death is death occurring within 24 hours of onset of symptoms in an individual who was not known to be suffering from any disease, injury, or poisoning. The term is generally applied to deaths occurring from natural causes rather than polytrauma or poisoning. Unexpected nature of the death generally more surprising than the suddenness. Sudden death constitutes 10% of all deaths and there is no age exemption. This table shows uh, the incidence of sudden death and the causes for the same. So we all know that diseases of cardiovascular system is the leading cause of sudden death followed by respiratory system, CNS, GIT and genitourinary system. Coming to the case report, is a dead body of a 17-year-old boy was brought by the police for autopsy. He was an apparently normal individual with no past history of any chronic diseases and uh, suddenly he complained of a uh, sudden onset of abdominal pain and vomiting at one night which was followed by he had taken some supportive measure uh, management from a fa family physician at home. And as his symptoms worsened next day afternoon, he had taken um, underwent an USG scan, which relieved peritonitis, and he was taken to the nearby hospital where he was declared as broad dead. So he had died within the 24 hours of onset of his symptoms. And at this point of time, our major uh, uh, main differential diagnosis of us, uh, acute appendicitis rupture, perforated peptic ulcer and uh, poisoning. And then we proceeded with autopsy. He was a, on ex external examination, he was a light brown complexion male measuring 171 centimeter in length, moderately built and nourished. Bluish discoloration was noted at the tip of fingers and nail beds. No demonstrable external injuries was present over the body. On internal examination, on opening the abdominal cavity, it was filled with dark brown to black colored fluid mixed with partially digested food particles. Anterior wall of the stomach was blackish discolored, softened, thinned out, and was deficient over an area of 10 to 12 centimeter. Brugge were prominent with reddish and blackish discoloration over it, and there was no unusual smell. In this time show, reddish discolored area with pale misandry and an intact appendix. Multiple pedicle hemorrhages was noted over the surface of the lungs, and patchy, it was patchy consolidated. All other organs appeared intact and blood and viscera were sent for chemical analysis for ruling out any chance of consumption of any poisons and it was negative for the same. Organs were sent for histopathological examination. The, uh, cerebrum and cerebellum shows congestion of uh, vascular channels. All coronaries were patent and in the lungs, extraviscerated RBCs was noted in the septum and caseating granuloma composed of epithelial cells and lymphocytes along with Jane cells was present. Liver parenchyma shows congestion and edema. Glomerulae and tubules were congested, congested. Spleen and pancreas showed features of congestion. And acute on tonic inflammatory cells was noted in the stomach. Initially, poisoning was also one of our DD, a differential diagnosis, but FSL was negative. And we all know that even though FSL is negative, there can be a chance that it is a, uh, it's a poisoning. So here in this point, we can tell that there is chronic inflammatory cells also in this case. So it's not only an acute event, but some chronic event was preceding this one. And loss of mucosa uh, and hemorrhage was also there, which is described in this picture, hemorrhage and necrosis of the stomach mucosa. Intestine shows superficial mucosal necrosis with crypt damage, showing decreased number and size of crypts. And acute on chronic inflammation of cirrhosal layer was noted, that is cirrhositis. And chronic inflammatory infiltrates with epithelial granulomas, mucosal and submucosal dense inflammatory cell infiltrates was noted in the intestine. And the HP report was, uh, lungs shows features of pulmonary tuberculosis, stomach wall thinned out area, which shows hemorrhagic necrosis with no granuloma but atypia. Intestine shows ischemic bowel changes with evidence of intestinal tuberculosis along with serocytes. So on perusal of all the uh, postmortem findings, pathology report and a chemical negative chemical analysis report. Uh, the cause of death is, death is due to shock of um, shock as a result of peritonitis by rupture of stomach consequent to gastrointestinal tuberculosis. Gastrointestinal tuberculosis is rare, accounts for 
only 1 to 3 percent of all TB cases worldwide. It is it typically presents with weight abdominal symptoms and it is um, the relatively sparing of the stomach is explained by the low uh, gastric pH and paucity of the lymphoid tissue. Incidence of perforation is only 1 to 11 percent and majority it is not perforations but it's a blow blowouts and it, the mortality is nearly 70 percent and this is a possible explanation because of GI tuberculosis there can be vasculitis which uh, prohibit the deoxygenated blood from leaving and it causes hemorrhage interruption of the acute, uh, adequate oxygen supply and lead to necrosis. To conclude, gastric tuberculosis is rare, but fatal and potentially curable illness. High index of suspicion along with detailed clinical, socioeconomic, family history. Thorough post-mortem examination and pathological studies are required to ascertain the cause of death in such cases. No other disease is more satisfactorily confirmed the famous medical again, that is, Uncommon presentation of common diseases are more common than common presentation of uncommon diseases than tuberculosis. These are my references. Thank you. Nice presentation. And any questions from the phone? Back. Excuse me. Uh, nice presentation. Thanks. But uh, in tuber, in uh, you told about intestinal tuberculosis. Yes, sir. Sir, which portion of the intestine had tuberculosis? Uh, sir, actually, uh, in the small intestine part of duodenum and also cecal part heart of uh, intestines, uh, TB, sir. So, which is ruptured? Sir, so, stomach was ruptured. The intestine was not ruptured, sir. What is the mechanism of causing of the rupture of the, is it a retro phenomena? What has caused the rupture of the sir, stomach? Uh, if there is gastrointestinal tuberculosis, and especially in the stomach, which is actually, uh, this hemorrhagic necrosis can happen in an organ where multiple blood supply is there, sir. In such organs, usually that hemorrhagic necrosis will happen. And TB can cause vasculitis of the, uh, the blood vessels, and which can hamper the uh, blood supply to that particular organ. So gradually there will be a onset of that necrosis uh, will be there. And suddenly, if there is any stricture formation, suddenly it can be ruptured, sir. And it's uh, as I told, it's like uh, rather than tuberculosis ulcer perforation, it, it will be like a blowout. So usually what happens in tuberculosis, there will be a constriction of the intestine. Uh, yes, sir. Right? Yes, so sir. it is the duodenum as well as the ileocecal junction. Yes, sir. So there should be some hemorrhages or the rupture of the small intestine too. Yes, sir. We um, like examined the full length of intestine, sir. We couldn't find any rupture in the intestine, sir. Only stomach was ruptured, sir. Okay. So it should be a case of miliary tuberculosis. Oh, yes, sir. It's actually miliary tuberculosis. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, sir. It's very rare, sir. Actually, my staff also told that in their 20 years of experience, they have never seen a case of gastric tuberculosis, sir. Because these people are at low social I said, actually, this guy was from a very uh, like rich family, sir. But oh. they never noticed his, like he have a symptoms of this one. like And they, he didn't have any symptoms. That is the thing, sir. Yes. The pathology, it was the... Uh, it, that's what it can be a disseminated TB. Hmm. Because there was a rupture of stomach was there, no? Because of the... Uh, he didn't die because of the... Uh, uh, no, no, no. We can't tell because of our experience also. There is a rupture of the uh, uh, stomach wall and there are loss, uh, loss of um, blood also and even the fluid also. So, this, uh, when I showed the stomach wall rupture also, uh, like when I opened the abdominal cavity, there was full of fluid that is actually altered blood. So, there is blood loss and because of the peritonitis. Uh, but uh, I think it's better to add, like, I don't know, like, I think it's better to put gastrointestinal tuberculosis because, like, he didn't die because of the pulmonary tuberculosis. And it was, like, very mild features in the autopsy also. Uh, like, patchy consolidation was there, but it was, like, very minimal. And it was, like, more of edematous. Yes. But the uh, features were more uh, in the intestine and the gastric. Okay. Uh, maybe last question. One, one question is, sir. Yes, yes. Uh, hello. Hey. Uh, yeah. No, I don't think so. Yes, sir. 
in interest, I didn't put the name, sir. Okay. The Kannada. Yeah, okay, sorry, sir. Okay. Uh, that's the last thing. Uh, here, here. Okay. Just a pathological diagnosis for vasculitis. Yes, sir. If at all you are suspecting because it is a gross necrosis, which and it is acute on chronic. Yes, sir. Okay. Was there vasculitis features seen in the histopathology? Uh, sir, uh, there was actually congestion of the vessels was there, sir. Other than that, to tell that it is a vasculitis, there was no other feature, uh, sir. Because that is what I was standing on to say it is vasculitis feature. Yes, or sir. else, as they said, it could be even thromboembolic phenomena leading to maybe. If it is vasculitis elsewhere, it has to be noted. Uh, sir, Thank even you. in the literature also, sir, they are still telling that the post, like, what is the ideal mechanism, or like, what is the correct mechanism of this rupture? Like, it's still on discussion, sir. Like, the correct mechanism, they also don't know. Like, it's like a probably this can be the cause, like that, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next uh, uh, presenter, Dr. Arvind Varman. He'll be presenting the a case report titled PST, a case report beeping. A warm welcome to everyone present here. Uh, today, I am Dr. Arvind Dorman from the Department of FMT from Jawaharlal Nehru Medical College, Balagavi. I am doing a case report uh, titled Bee Sting, a case report beeping under the guidance of Dr. Somashekar S. Pujar and Dr. Vinay Bannur, sir. Introduction. Uh, bee stings are a uh, bee sting emergency are the most common emergencies uh, to be encountered in among all insect stings or bites. And then the bee venom contains dopamine, histamine, and uh, neurotoxin enzymes, melatonin, hyaluronidase, and phospholipase. These kinds of enzymes and uh, the bee stings hypersensitivity reactions could range from mild urticaria and angioedema and even more fatal, leading to death. Even. And uh, the anaphylaxis also can immediately occur within 20 minutes, uh, with immediately to just 20 minutes. And also, the after the occurrence of uh, anaphylaxis, the death could be uh, more faster within 2 to 15 minutes. These are the case details. Uh, the case history is that uh, our case, our patient is uh, a 71 years old man who has uh, uh, who went to attend his friend's funeral at morning at around 8 a.m. And while he returning, he was got uh, attacked by a swarm of bees around 8 a.m. in the Nitu Road near Balagavi. And he sustained multiple injuries all over his body. And then he managed to evade the space and he escaped to his home. And uh, yeah, just after a few minutes, he just collapsed in his home with the following uh, symptoms like vomiting, weakness, fatigability, urticaria, and dizziness. Then he was immediately taken to our hospital and while coming, he was brought dead to the casualty at around 9.30 a.m. And uh, since it was a brought dead case, he was immediately taken up for a... Uh, um, it was considered as a medical case and was taken up for the autopsy. These are the exam external examinations. He was a 160, 160 centimeter uh, tall person. He was moderately built and nourished. Rigor mortis was developed all over the body. Uh, sorry, upper part of the body and postmortem staining was present over the back. And the external injuries were multiple bee stings were found over scalp, face, both arms and forearms, uh, chest, below axilla, and also over the back. Uh, and surrounding by a zone of inflammation around each thing. These are the external examination findings. Here you can see number multiple bee stings present over the face and lips, even, even inside the nostrils also. And even after while removing his clothes, multiple bees were found inside him. And these were the stings removed uh, using a forceps, a closer view. And the internal examination findings are that uh, skull, scalp and vertebra were intact. The brain was intact and pale. Heart was normal, intact. Uh, and the larynx and trachea, they showed intact. They were intact, edematous and was congested and were obstructing the laryngeal lumen. This is the histopathology that we sent and uh, it shows uh, uh, edema or the stoma. The pharynx and esophagus were intact and congested. Both lungs uh, were showed adhesions and uh, it was heavy, diffusely congested and on cut section blood exuded with compression. Uh, it, it was heavy that it weighed, uh, right lung weighed for 5 grams and the left weighed for 436 grams. 
and the histopathology of the lungs showed that the bronchial lumen in the left side of the histology is filled with mucus and the magnification image shows numerous uh, esophilic infiltration over the slides and all other organs including liver gallbladder and spleen were intact and uh, spleen was found to be chronic congestive splenomegaly and uh, kidneys were intact and uh, was more congested on cut section and the cause of death was given as on perusal of hospital records police inquest forms post uh, postmortem examination findings histopathology report and i am of the opinion that the death is due to anaphylactic shock as a result of multiple bee stings sustained coming to the discussion part honey bee stings contains bee venom enzymes and uh, uh, some biological amines including histamine serotonin dopamine uh, norepinephrine and acetylcholine the bee sting uh, can present in four modes either four or all of the modes like it involves skin cvs uh, respiratory system and gat that is uh, skin involving erythema and uh, local inflammation cvs including acute coronary syndrome hypotension and shock and uh, respiratory system involving laryngeal edema and bronchospasm whereas the gat causing uh, nausea vomiting and incontinence in case of uh, attack by a swarm of bees the treatment should be started immediately and the, the like as follows it is like ligature above the site of insting and uh, removal of the stinger using a forceps immediately and also local application by antihistamines and uh, uh, local ice for in avoiding pain uh, and acth 25 mg should be started with uh, in a liter of normal saline and other supportive measures like parenteral antihistamines pain relievers and also it been started in our case the patient uh, presented with all four systems involved that is he presented with skin and uh, skin and uh, symptoms like itching and attic area hypotension and shock and nausea vomiting and also bronchospasm and edema laryngeal edema so uh, if the patient could have come to hospital immediately he could have been revived and the unwanted death could have been avoided and that way concluding the uh, our paper like uh, with highlighting the clinical manifestations and the fatal outcomes of the honey bee sting envenomation and including the autopsy findings and anaphylaxis due to uh, bee venom and the need for the immediate resuscitation by anticipating the unwanted fatal outcomes uh, including death these are my references thank you thank you <clears throat> the forum is open for discussion uh, in the treatment part uh, in the bee sting you were telling that uh, put, uh, putting a ligature above the bee sting yes. in case of multiple bee stings yes. verbally put ligature sir it is general discussion part but in case of multiple discussion uh, multiple bee sting injuries it cannot be effective if there is a in uh, usually bee stings over the face head yes, so when you put the gates not possible sir uh did you send viscera or blood to histo uh, toxicology analysis no sir Uh, is it required to send uh, uh, blood or viscera? Uh, viscera? If so, what will you find, or will you get a negative opinion? No, sir. Uh, I don't think it is necessary to send it for uh, FSL. Reason, sir? Uh, I'm sure it could not. It it couldn't be detected because. Uh, death is due to anaphylaxis that is as a release of histamines and other uh, things like that not due to the venomation in your slide presentation yes. first during external examination yes. you have uh, uploaded a picture on the side on the top yes. was it about that patient only or a general uh, in the first external examination no yes, no, no 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 back yeah next before previous previous slide yeah this one this one ah no sir it is just for a uh, image google image sir yes yes sir yes sir no sir If the person is died means that why you inform the police, sir? So maybe I could have sustained multiple injuries in our case, but also uh, if he was assaulted with any poisoning or uh, 
any other injuries could be there when the patient was unconscious then we can file an emergency if he is conscious enough to answer what has happened and uh, no and there is no suspicion uh, not required sir. thank you thank you dr arvin we have the next presenter dr p r kartika <clears throat> the title named the food for one poison for another Volunteer, sir. Anyone is free? Can we have the next presenter? Doctor in uh, Pichai Muthu. presenting the paper titled fatal carotid artery injury in an industrial setting Yes, sir. Myself, Dr. Chintu. Here, I am going to present the topic on fatal carotid artery injury in an industrial setting. According to the introduction, according to international labor organization data, there have been 337 million workplace accidents and 2.3 million deaths happening everywhere, which is related. rarely translate into 6300 deaths per day most common causes of occupational fatality includes falls machine related incidents electrocutions fall of objects etc this is the case in a 30 year old male came to an emergency with an allergy history of allergy allergy history of collapse and a sudden gush of blood from the neck he came to an emergency in an unconscious state then patient after initial stabilization patient shifted to emergency ot where there was carotid artery repair was done after carotid artery repair was done the patient could not be survived he is come to death and then autopsy was conducted on next day meanwhile ongoing police investigation it reveals that patient got sudden neck injury from the steel bed while he was working in the steel industry Extra, coming to the external findings, rigor was present, post mortem lividity was present, but not fixed. This was this was a surgically sutured wound of size twenty twenty four centimeter long, placed horizontally over the left left intercostal space. The layer of the intercostal muscles are dissected, having soft margin with the intact pericardium. It 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 is suggestive of emergency thoracotomy for open cardiac muscles. as can be seen in the picture this is the another suture wound of size 12 cm placed present horizontally on the left side of neck at the level of thyroid cartilage and on removing the suture there was superficial and removing the suture and and removing the suture there was a superficial neck structure was severed and then white color bone mats of size 1.5 Into two into zero point five centimeters seen around the carotid artery, and then there was a dark clotted blood seen diffusely on the left side of the neck. Then, on further exploring exploring the wound, there was a blue color vascular suture present in the carotid artery at the level of thyroid cartilage. There was hemorrhage and contusion present around the surrounding structures. Coming to the discussion, workplace accident. still causes significant mortality and morbidity mostly soft tissue injuries over neck are more commonly reported in homicide and suicidal cases 
but the accidental soft force injury rarely encoded in forensic practice should not be overlooked. This was the missing and this was the rate involved in this in accident. In a factory setup, important safety gears and immediate medical intervention in case of any mishap are of paramount importance. Therefore, that's why employees must therefore exercise caution while handling heavy gear equipment and keep their body away from it. Coming to the conclusion, this, this place less stress on crucial role of recognizing the injury pattern and, in, and in the need of collecting circumstantial evidence to determine the manner of death. It also reveals the lack of protective equipment and the lack of awareness among workers on immediate care and management in this circumstance by keep it be saved. Thank you. These are my doctor. Thank you. Any questions from the audience? Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Pichai Mutu. Can we have the last presenter for today's session? Dr. P. R. Kartika. For a minute, we'll wait for the minutes. Yes, ma'am. Please start, ma'am. Good afternoon, everyone. Topic of my presentation is Foot for One and Poison for Another. I am Dr. Pia Kartika Dinar from the Department of Forensic Medicine and Toxicology from Government Medical College, Thiruvanthapura. Here we are discussing about the brief history of the case as well as autopsy findings and discussion part. About the brief history, a 30 year old male who was moderately built and nourished was having symptoms of fever, loose stools, and vomiting for two days. And the patient expired 
within five hours of admission. As per history, he was having a recurrent. Uh, he used to take yoga daily and used to have food uh, from outside. Past medical history was history was history of SARS-CoV-2 infection one month back, and there were no other known comorbidities. And anemotum investigation reports where hemoglobin level was seventeen point one gram per centimeter. Total count was four thousand nine hundred and forty cells per cubic millimeter. Creatinine level was three point six milli milligram per centimeter, and serum sodium was one thirty eight milliequivalents per liter, and serum potassium was five point seven milliequivalents per liter. But the autopsy findings: he was a moderately built and nourished adult male with conjunctival pain, and there were dry blood stains seen at the mouth as well as nostrils. And the scalp showed petechial hemorrhages, and brain weighed thousand three hundred one gram, which was congested and edematous. And uh, lower and upper lobe of right lung, as well as lower lobe of left lung, showed blackish depressed area, which was revealed as hemosiderin laden macrophages, as per histopathology report. And uh, there were the heart was flabby and weighed two sixty seven gram. There was subepicardial sub sub hemorrhages as well as subendocardial hemorrhages, and on cut section of stomach, it revealed few amount of reddish mucoid fluid having no unusual smell, and mucosa was inflamed and swollen, and there were submucosal hemorrhages. The intestine of loops were distended with hemorrhages in the transverse colon, and on cut section, it showed it was inflamed as well as submucosal hemorrhages were seen. Kidneys were pale. And spleen was friable, and all other internal organs were paid. And COVID nineteen RT PCR test was reported as negative before autopsy. About the post mortem investigation reports, uh, we sent tissue bits to histopathological examination as well as blood and intestinal contents were sent for microbiology laboratory for culture analysis as well as sample of blood and viscera was sent to chemical examination laboratory. The microbiology laboratory report came as blood sample culture yielded growth of Salmonella typhi murium. This picture shows the blood agar as well as McConkey agar. And on histopathological examination of intestinal mucosa, it revealed autolytic changes and capillaries were congested. Chemical examination report revealed that there was no poison detected in the sample of blood and viscera. Opinion as to cause of death was death was due to Salmonella typhi murium infection. About the discussion part, as per advisory committee on the microbiological safety of food, UK defined food poisoning as an infectious or toxic nature caused by the consumption of food or water, and there was no death report due to Salmonella typhi murium infection in the state of Kerala for five years, past five years. Bacterial food poisoning is mainly divided into three main types: that is, infectious type, toxic type, as well as botulism. And on the descending order of the frequency of causative organism for bacterial infection, bacterial food poisoning first comes is Staphylococcus, second this is Clostridium perfringens, third is Salmonella, and fourth is Shigella, and fifth is Streptococcus. Among the Salmonella species, most common is the Salmonella typhi murium, with an incubation period of Equal to or less than twenty-four hours, and the other species are Salmonella enteritis, Salmonella hida, Salmonella hidalberg, and Salmonella agona. Salmonella enterocolitis is in which symptoms begin eight to forty-eight hours after the, after the ingestion of infective dose, and it uh, usually lasts for about three to five days. And in case of Salmonella uh, typhi murium colitis. There will be crypt abscess and erosions will be seen, and there will be ulceration of the colonic mucosa. And the sources are egg, milk and milk products, meat, sesame seed products, household pets. About the pathophysiology, cytotoxin is produced, and which penetrates the intestinal mucosa leads to the multiplication of bacilli, which further leads to septicemia, which is evident in the anti-mortem investigation. About the medical legal aspect, is the cause of sudden natural death. With postmortem investigation is highly relevant in these type of cases with history, and the take-home message is it's a rare cause of natural death. And with timely diagnosis and treatment, would have prevented the death. And health education is highly necessary. These are my references. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am.
the forum is open for discussion. Any questions? Uh, in the postmortem examination of the lungs, yes, you had mentioned some finding. Yes, sir. Uh, what was that finding due to? So it's due to alveolar hemorrhages. Hemocytin laden macrophages is uh, is usually seen in alveolar hemorrhages. And uh, is it related to salmonella infection? No, sir. Acute usually happens in chronic uh, due to some chronic illness due to bronchial asthma. And he was having COVID one month back, and this can be a uh, Could the death be related to COVID infection? Is, a, is there any possibility? So septicemia, septicemia and renal function can be impaired in case of a post-COVID syndrome. And uh, here, as per RTPC test, is negative. It can just be declared as and um, on the no, basis since, of microbiological investigation. No, since you have mentioned since past five years, there were no such deaths reported in Kerala. Uh, so based on that, could it have been a COVID infection or complication because of COVID infection? So there were no other uh, associated findings like uh, pro uh, pulmonary thrombosis or something other was not there. On gross examination as well as, as, well as histopathological examination, we just uh, got finding in this lung that is macrophagian laden mac uh, crystals were there. Hemocytin laden macrophages were seen only in his. Last question, Dr. Kishore. On what section is there any unnatural death, isn't it? On 174. Did it just have... Sir? What, what is the section charge in this case? 174. We are from Kerala, isn't it? Yes, sir. We, we read it in the media that recently that one so many people ate shawarma and died. So it was not salmonella typhimurium. Due to salmonella typhimurium infection is only this case, sir. Thank you, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Dr. Kar. We'll be concluding the session. Any questions? Thank you. Yes. Your main diagnosis was based on microbiology. Yes, sir. Your main diagnosis was based on, cause of death was based on microbiology. Yes, sir. And uh, the microbiology was sent blood as well as intestinal contents. Yes, sir. I'd like to know, like, how did you send those uh, samples to microbiology to without uh, avoiding any contamination. So on sterile uh, conditions, sir, after uh, taking the pericardial sac uh, on the anterior basis, we just uh, kept the um, knife under temperature and sealed the uh, right ventricle and from there direct uh, through sterile syringe, we took the blood sample and the intestinal content was, was also taken the similar way, sir. That's what, because uh, the most important is contamination. Yes, sir. Contamination could occur at the time of cutting the samples. Yes, sir. The person may not have been suffering from salmonella typhoid. Yes. It may be contamination also, because moisture is highly contaminated. We took. How did you rule out that contamination? That's what I'm asking. Because your entire cause of death is based on microbiology, not your PM findings. Sir, we based on the history and uh, we correlate the history, uh, antimortem investigation and postmortem uh, investigations to uh, come into a diagnosis, sir. Uh, uh, to opinion, uh, for for an opinion to cause of death, sir. Yeah, if, uh, uh, contamination. Yeah, just one thing is, if at all this sample would have taken it uh, in uh, uh, surgical surgery, okay, OT, I still can uh, believe. But if a sample is taken, microbiology sample is taken at in the mortuary setup, very difficult to hard to believe that probably that it is due to salmonella typhimurium with any contamination. Contamination. Contamination is a major problem in mortuary setup. Thank you. We did it in a right? Yeah, yeah. No, we believe, but the contamination is very difficult yes. to lead out. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Sir. Thank you, madam. We'll be concluding the session. And uh, we thank the organizing team uh, for providing us the opportunity to chair the session. Thank you. Thank you very much.
thank you sir thank you all the speakers now i'd like to call upon dr gb uh, gb arvin sir to come up on the stage and felicitate our chair persons please Now we are having a short break of ten minutes. We would like everyone to kindly proceed to the front of the auditorium to help. Following the break, we'll be having the valedictory ceremony. We'd like everyone to come and assemble here once again in ten to fifteen.
Seeking the blessings of His Holiness, we would like to welcome you all to the valedictory ceremony of KamalsCon 2022. We hope you have all enjoyed yourselves in the past two days of the conference and are taking home some insight into collaborative forensics. Now, I would like to call upon stage Dr. Praveen Kulkarni, Vice Principal, JSS Medical College, Dr. Arun M, Dr. Chandrakant HV and Dr. Smita Rani on the dais to felicitate the winners. I would also like to invite and say Dr. Arvind, uh, G.B. Arvind on stage to felicitate the winners. Firstly, we will be announcing the winners of the faculty and PG oral presentation. The awards for the winners have been instituted by Dr. Balaraj BM in the name of Shri BM Rithyan Jayappa and Srimati BM Gaurama Bhima Samudra. The first prize winner is being awarded with the cash prize of Rs. 3000 and a certificate of appreciation. The second prize winner is being awarded with the cash prize of Rs. 2000 and a certificate of appreciation as well. The second prize in the faculty category goes to Dr. Uday Shankar BS. The first prize goes to Dr. Mahalakshmi B. Karlavad.
coming to the winners of the faculty and PG poster presentation. The awards for the winner have been instituted by Dr. Balraj BM in the name of Shri BM Rithyan Jayapa and Shri Mati BM Gaurama BM Samadhi. The second prize winner is being awarded with a cash prize of rupees 2000 and a cent. The second prize in the faculty category goes to Dr. Shivakumar P. A small clarification for most of the remote cash prize, but only for all people. Agnes is collecting on behalf of Dr. Joe. The first prize goes to Dr. Vikas Basavaraj Arabi. presenting the best paper award undergraduate category the second prize for the best paper award goes to chirag Amal. mayor sanantan is collecting on behalf of chirag yadav and the first prize goes to yashas pp Now be awarding the winners of the PG quiz in Questa. The first place goes to Dr. Shruti MK. She is getting a cash prize of rupees five thousand, a memento, and a certification of appreciation. Second place goes to Dr. Shifali Navamani. She is getting a cash prize of rupees three thousand, a memento, and a certificate of appreciation. Third place goes to Dr. Georgina George. She is getting a cash prize of rupees two thousand, a memento, and a certificate of appreciation.
applause for all the winners. We would like to give the judges a small token of our gratitude. I would like to call upon Dr. Suraj S. Shetty to kindly come to the dais and accept our token. Dr. Suraj S. Shetty was the judge of the oral category of the postgraduate and undergraduate oral presentation. Now I'd like to call upon Dr. Manu John Chawalu. Now we'd like to call upon the judges of the post of e post of presentation. Uh, I would like to call upon Dr. Dayananda R. I'd like to call upon Dr. Praveen Kumar N. Kamar. He was also the judge of the post of I now like to call upon Dr. Brinda Bhatt. She was the jury, part of the jury of the faculty oral tone presentation. Ma'am was part of the jury of both oral and post presentation. I'd now like to call upon Dr. Nagesh K.R. He was a judge for the faculty oral and post Huge round of applause for all our judges. Now we request Dr. Praveen Kulkarni, Vice Principal of JSS Medical College, to felicitate Dr. K. H. Tipiswamy, Senior Professor, who has retired from service in May 2020. The felicitation is being done to recognize his service to the Forensic Medicine subject and Karnataka Medical Legal Society. I'd like to call upon Dr. Arun M. to elaborate upon Dr. Tripaswamy's service and achievements. Thank you, Praveen. Uh, it is my uh, privilege to uh, invite uh, Dr. K. H. Tripaswamy, a senior professor of uh, forensic medicine uh, of our state of Karnataka. Uh, he uh, got graduated in MBBS from MMC Mysore in 1982 and DFM in, uh, uh, from BMC in 1992. Uh, then he served in various capacities in different institutions, Ambedkar Medical College, KVG Medical College, Sulia, and he got retired in 5-5-2020. Uh, and now he is uh, leading a peaceful retirement life. One of the objective of Kamal's is to uh, felicitate the senior faculty who have served very meaningfully to the subject of forensic medicine and to the Society of Karnataka Medical Legal Society. Uh, so the office bearers of Kamal's 2020 122 takes it as a pride to uh, felicitate K. H. Tipeswami, sir, and who is uh, one of the founder mem member of uh, Kamals, uh, which was formed in 1991-92, and he is the one who has designed the logo of the Kamals, which is there on display. Uh, uh, with this brief introduction, uh, I thank uh, Tipeswami, sir, uh, for serving Kamals, and uh, I wish 
that uh, he saw he get uh, he continues his association with kamals and forensic medicine uh, all the very best to you sir on behalf of the entire kamals uh, uh, organizing committee thank you Somehow the mic uh, seems to be attracting me because when nobody came up, I thought uh, the fantastic efforts. The uh, I, there is no words for this conference, and as he rightly said, uh, Dr. Arun, that after a break of uh, I think the last on-site conference was in 2018 with uh, KMC Manipal. After that, it went online, virtual. So we were all meeting each other after uh, two years, two and a half years. Almost three months. So it was, you know, it was kind of a exhilarating experience, and that too uh, uh, with a person who is known to be, you know, going by the strict guidelines, as was rightly said by Tanuj in the morning, that if it has to be done like this, it has to be done like that in the stipulated time. So he has done his fantastic efforts. No, if I if I had an extra set of hands, I would have even clapped louder. But this is for you, Arun, and this is not only for Arun. This is for Dr. Chandrakant, Dr. G. B. Arvind, Dr. Smita Rani, and all the postgraduates and the undergraduates. I really love you, people. All the undergraduates, welcome. This fellow, I have today. I have harassed him like anything during the sessions, but he was meekly standing like an obedient student. I loved your students, uh, uh, Arun. They are so obedient and tirelessly helpful. I, I am not known. I don't know about that. But uh, Jovina, some other names that I am going to make. Uh, Jovina Kaustov, yes, and you too. I, I don't know your names. Manasa and. Aman, fantastic job! You never made us feel lost anywhere about anything. And Hari Vikram, come on, yar, you deserve it. Stand up, take the ovation, take the bow. You deserve it tirelessly to such an extent that when Smita yesterday told Brinda Madam said she'll be late for the bus, find out if she's not. He has made every effort. It is not about me alone. He has made every effort. For every single delegate here, I have seen him run around, and all of them running around, and uh, you know, doing their job meticulously. So hats off to you, Arun, and your entire team. 
and thank you jss medical college the management of jss medical college for making this happen in such a beautiful way a big round of applause to them i think you all should come here and take the final bow please because it's time you now decor the stage please vikram come 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 hari vikram and everybody else who has helped please i have not mentioned the names but this yes vignesh you just go and tell me the name anil vignesh suhas chaluwa everybody from back stage come to the front stage time to come to the front of the stage manya adya nishchita and it's time you take the bow of appreciation आद्य एंड सीता लक्ष्मी कम फास्ट प्लीज कम 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 तो अब बिग टू देम फॉर अ फैंटास्टिक जॉब डन गिविंग नो स्कोप फॉर इवन अ सिंगल कंप्लेन अबाउट एनीथिंग अबाउट एनीथिंग फॉर दैट मैटर ग्रेट जॉब ग्रेट जॉब अरुण कुडोस टू यू Because would like to share anything, please come. we now like praveen sir to speak a few words seeking the blessings of his holiness uh, i'll just take 2 minutes of my time i told sir that i'm going to speak only five sentences so the first sentence is heart heartiest congratulations to the department of forensic medicine and toxicology under the able leadership of uh, arun sir have organized a wonderful conference uh, the way madam put the things on records you know uh, that makes any person to feel so excited to uh, learn about our own organization when somebody is appreciating so thank you very much sir and congratulations to the entire team of forensic medicine for organizing this event uh one one thing i would like to tell and end my uh, uh, you know words uh forensic medicine is one of the smallest department in the entire jss medical college so they have very less number of people and they and you know lot many activities being in the deep university we we have so many other uh, courses and programs also to offer and cbme is an added problem on all the which all the things which are already existing and with such a limited manpower and limited amount of resources organizing such a mammoth event is not an easy task at all the team from forensic medicine department has proven beyond doubt that when you have an internal motivation when you have a passion within yourself when you have a dedication and commitment to the specialty which you are serving the resources never ever matter they done a wonderful job by organizing such a conference in a very meticulous manner and you know involving undergraduate students i know what is the pain of involving you know students and getting the things done they have done it so well that can be done only by forensic medicine department no one else so they were all with me for undergraduate conference asclepius we organize once in a year so you know we know we understand how difficult it is to keep them motivated sustain their motivation all together and you know from the jss medical college from principal's office i extend a warm greeting to the department of forensic medicine for organizing this event and thank all the delegates for coming all the way from different parts and then you know, i hope you have enjoyed our hospitality and our campus facilities and the scientific feast if there is anything if anything has gone you know uh, 
unexpectedly wrong so it is you now we accept that and definitely in future we'll try to improve on that please let us know if there is anything we need to improve and we are open for improvement and again once again i would like to thank everyone for coming to jss keep coming and keep responding to the you know feedback forms and meet us frequently so that you know we are going to build a healthier and beautiful world thank you very much this brings us to the end of the valedictory ceremony and with it to the end of kamalscon 2022 now we'd like dr arun m to propose the word of thanks thank you pratham i seek the blessings of his holiness swami ji and uh, yesterday i began with welcome note and uh, today ending with a uh, word of thanks after two days of uh, scientific deliberations uh, uh, well uh, uh, a part of my thanks uh, giving already done in gbm uh, almost same uh, uh, audience are here uh, only our vice principal brand new vice principal very uh, last week <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, Ravin is a very uh, dependable person for me in medical education, and uh, Smita also has got recently promoted as associate professor. So congratulations to her. Uh, yeah, it is a it is a nice thing to share this from this podium because Kamal should have been very good uh, lucky omen for us, uh, and uh, Smita has become associate professor. Well, uh, coming to this conference. Uh, a uh, thanksgiving i don't know where to start where to end so to keep it simple uh, i must thank uh, the management of jss achr pro chancellor vice chancellor uh, and registrar who is our own professor who was here for almost till afternoon he had to leave for uh, out of india on uh, another commitment so he had to uh, board a, a flight so he has left and uh, uh, from my department myself and chandrakant smita arvin sir Uh, we all have worked to the best possible way we could by uh, building strategies and that was we were ably supported by our wonderful team of uh, post graduates uh, uh, vikram uh, vignesh gauri kshima uh, and uh, atira pooja and ashwati yeah uh, so i think i missed one vignesh i told okay so we have this many because they are part of our own uh, department and uh, of course uh, ug students actually they are having internals and uh, for one batch internals was going on and another batch would start from monday in spite of that they they divided it one two people will study and two will come uh, so uh, they helped us kaustub jovina they did uh, mc yesterday pratham and aishwarya today wonderful mc they did thank you for both of them and special thanks to yeah thank you for both of them all four of them and special thanks must go to the students of bsc forensic science they have done a wonderful job uh, maybe it is anil maybe it is adya maybe it is uh, suhas uh, it, it started yesterday but a uh, lot of things have happened quite long before so they were uh, well aligned with us and Uh, without compromising with their academics and other activities they could strike a very well balance and uh, i thank them and uh, uh, from kamal's actually uh, i must thank in the past tenure till now what i told was for this conference but this conference is the end product of the office bearers one year tenure that i took over from runda ma'am in the last year 2021 november and uh, uh, for me to really take it for one particular complete year Uh, Pramod is the first one uh, to be thanked because of him. I could uh, really feel that uh, I could take it because I am not into that type of organizing thing. I am like for myself and do my assigned job. But uh, Pramod was the one who was uh, very much keen and he motivated me. And after I took over, lot of help I got from uh, Nagesh and uh, Uday Shankar uh, because uh, to. Uh, have a continuous uh, communication about corpus fund and maybe to do lot of other administrative work so uh, everybody helped uh, in their own capacity but this day i call as tripod because of which uh, i could sustain thanks to nagesh pramod and uh, uday shankar thank you so much and of course all delegates uh, some of them have left and some are here so the delegates uh, who could register 
who could uh, submit their abstracts and made it a very wonderful uh, deliberation and resource persons right from vice chancellor uh, pradeep sir ips officer uh, we could drop in best of the best resource faculty for our conference uh, hoping to make it a wonderful deliberation hope it has we have delivered to the best of our capacity and as pravin said uh, none of us are perfect at the end of the day if something has gone wrong please let us know we are open to uh, uh, improve ourselves and uh, with this uh, word of thanks i thank again each one of you for uh, being with us and uh, making this uh, uh, two days of uh, conference uh, success and yeah of course uh, and my own uh, i call him hero uh ranjit because ranjit uh, because of ranjit it got live streamed and lot of people uh, ranjit thanks apart uh and thanks to the it department it department uh, uh, is represented by ranjit actually the cio mr ravindra and dhananjay i have wrote a mail to them that's all i didn't even go to their office so much of uh, streamlining is there in the institution things will get done everything is on place so we are very uh grateful to such a wonderful system in which we are working and uh, uh, this is uh, uh, i mean uh, uh, this is the best thing as organizing uh, chairman i myself uh, could uh, experience and uh, with this uh, i wish the next office bearers my own genius boy who is uh, elected as president so we will all meet in the next uh, kamal's conference in namma mangaluru namma kudla uh, so thank you one and all if uh, anybody have missed Uh, obviously uh, we could do this uh, 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 program in this wonderful uh, auditorium of uh, pharmacy college uh, our sister concern uh, so our thanks on record uh, to the college of pharmacy principal uh, dr pramod kumar so thank you one and all last but not the least i would like to take this opportunity to thank dr arun m because of whom we got to learn so much in this conference